Morning everybody, uh, here at the Royal Commonwealth Pool for the Scottish Swimming Winter Short Course Meet. This is session four of the, the uh, whole programme. Some exciting swimming yesterday. I'm Tony Rose and with me we have Chris Jones from Edinburgh University. What's your, what's your formal title, Chris, at, uh, well, at the university? <laughs> well, Head of Swimming is my uh, official title. Uh, I've been doing that for the, the last 13 years. Excellent. And a whole crew of other coaches with you as well, but we, yeah. can, uh, we yeah, can get yeah. into that as we go through the, the session this morning, I'm <laughs> of sure. Of course, of course. So any reflections? We had a great day of swimming yesterday. Any reflections on some of the, the swims from your team and others yesterday? Yeah, no, I thought there were some really, really good swims. Um, certainly from our point of view, we I think you got a little bit missed from the, the report, but um, we, there was a Greek national record form from Iona Satya. Uh, there was a... 207 she went which is a two second uh, inside her own national record which was an excellent fantastic swim. yeah brilliant and some other records yesterday as well with the particularly the young age group boys there seem to be a number of uh, very fast young swimmers in yesterday so hopefully we can have more of that more of that yeah. today as well and there's the um, program for today uh, out on the screen at the moment um, set of women's different different boys and girls events this morning unlike yesterday they were the same so any particular event you're looking forward to in that one uh, that line up there Chris well, I'm looking forward to the women's under fly. I think there's some really good talent coming through. We've obviously Tane Bruce at U University of Edinburgh, Keanu McInnes, uh, and the, uh, Lucy Grieve from South Asia. So really stacking up in the women's under fly. So I'm looking forward to that. Very good. Yeah, should be some exciting. So this is the first of three sessions this morning. We've got the faster heats this morning in the events. So I'll just run through them whilst the officials are being marched on, as you can see there. So we have the women's 200 IM this morning, the men's 200 freestyle women's 100 fly, then the men's 100 breast, women's 53, men's 50 backstroke, women's 200 breaststroke, men's 200 fly, women's 100 back, men's 100 IM, and ending up with the women's 400 freestyle. So fastest heats this morning, so uh, should, be, should be a good exciting set of races, hopefully I would think today. And so any any reflections other than uh, on yesterday in terms of um, your own team? So how, do, how did your, your guys oh, do no, yesterday? We, there was a raft of personal bests and, and season's bests and uh, really exciting to see some of the, the first year athletes come through uh, and do such a good job with, with the transition and moving away from home. So we're really excited about what's going on in Edinburgh just now. Yeah, it's a big thing with those three big programmes in Scotland with Stirling and Aberdeen and, uh, and Edinburgh. So, uh, yeah, that whole transition is a big, a big deal when they're getting Huge into deal. first year, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that transition from age group to senior is uh, it's quite a big it's step. It's a lot to take on board moving Absolutely. away from home. So we're just uh, doing a few of the health and safety things that go on in the pool uh, whilst we're waiting for the races, the first... Heat girls are, are lining up. So we're starting off the first event. We have the women's 200 metres individual medley. We've got uh, six heats in here. Some, uh, this is the first meet that Scottish Swimming has held without Hannah Miley being being in place. This would have uh, possibly been one of her, uh, her outlier events. So that's uh, same same see Hannah go. Absolutely. But what a service, eh? Oh, absolutely. I've been around. I've been lucky enough to work with her for years and. Uh, uh, what a what a servant to swimming she's been in Scottish swimming, uh, and obviously the same week was Amy Wilmot was based in Stirling as well. So in the yeah. same event, so for for the individual medley, it's a, it's a big loss to swimming. Absolutely, but a great opportunity for some of the youngsters oh, coming yeah. through, and there are many youngsters, including Scotland's own Katie Shanahan as well. So oh, she's a phenomenal talent. Absolutely. So we'll look forward to seeing how she gets on. Absolutely. So Katie not swimming at uh, this event in this event this weekend. She was selected for the GB World. World Championship team the World Short Course yep. which, uh, which leaves uh, this next week I think so we're looking forward to see how, how she gets on absolutely and Duncan Scott I think from Scotland yeah in there. Duncan and Scott and Lucy Hope absolutely uh, so she Lucy was at Edinburgh at a point she's right, now moved yeah. to Stirling hasn't she she moved out to Stirling uh, after the Olympics and just looking for a, a fresh change and uh, you know wish her well yeah absolutely often good to mix up the uh, mix up the coaching as you go through so uh, right. you've just got the start list there for the first heat of this women's 200 individual medley and they'll be kicking off very shortly So off we go in this first event, in this first heat. In lane two, we have Zara Smith from Best. Louise Connell from City of Glasgow is in lane three. Katie Rose from Warren de Baths 
in lane four. In five, Charlotte Thompson from Mid Lothian. And in lane six, Helen Stoddart, East Lothian. So a steady starting from these girls. It's Katie Rose and Helen Stoddart are taking it out in the fly. Yeah, these girls have taken it on in the fly. Um, it's good to stay relaxed on the, this first part. Make sure the transition turns here are good. That's all really solid. And that's Helen just turning first, 30.87, just followed closely by Katie. It's important on the backstroke to keep the rate up here, not let it drop too much, uh, save the legs for the, for the breaststroke leg coming up. And it's Katie Rose just taking it on in this backstroke, pulling away from Helen. That's a good turn there. She's moving ahead now on, the, on this backstroke leg. And often in IM, um, you know, the breaststroke's usually the, the thing that changes all things around, doesn't it? Well, this, this transition turn here from back to breast is really important. See, some girls do, do it differently. There's the flip one, which you saw there, um, and uh, there's the touch turn, which is a, a couple of girls that did there. So it's really something that they have to hone in on. Absolutely. So in to we go into the breaststroke. Still, Katie got a four or five metres uh, lead on the field. And uh, we have Charlotte and Helen following through on her. Good... Good pushing through from uh, Charlotte here. Looks like she's yeah. perhaps a breaststroke specialist. Charlotte's stretching out here, trying to catch up on um, on Katie. So the Diamonds are almost coming into play across the pool as they're going in with their seated times. So coming in into the last five under the flags with Katie. Let's see so how this freestyle turns out. So Charlotte's had a very strong breaststroke leg there, pulled back a number of metres on Katie, a couple of seconds Katie has in lead, see if she can hold on on this freestyle leg Yeah, it's uh, starting to sting a bit now but the, all the girls are uh, swimming really well, holding on to the stroke on this freestyle. So Katie coming in with 25 to go, with uh, Charlotte just behind her and then over in lane 2, it's been a very good breaststroke to freestyle for Zara Smith she's coming in on third, but it's going to be Katie Rose who's going to take this one out. She's got about five metres on it. Her entry time was 2.33. So I think she's going to get nicely under that. So 2.30.6 for Katie. Second is Charlotte Thompson. And in third was Louise Connor. We'll get the results up on the screen in a minute. So a nice strong start there. That's a good swim there from Katie, from Warrender there. So there we have the, uh, the final heat there. 2.30.6 for Katie. Charlotte was 2.33. Louise Connell, 2.35. So a nice start to the morning session there. Yeah. It was an interesting event, 200 IM. You know, it's a bit of everything for everybody in that one. Yeah, it's the, it's the decathlon for, of uh, swimming, you know. All the different strokes mixed together. There's a lot of strategy involved. And in terms of training, do people train differently for 200 IM? If you're a specialist 200 IM, or how does that? Yeah, I think just getting a cross-section of the strokes and training on each of them, technically working on each of them, as I said earlier, working on those transition turns, very important. So moving into heat two, we've got a full full set of eight swimmers here. And in this heat, we have Freya Mason in lane one, Alice Cummings in lane two. In lane three, we have Ailey Armstrong from East Lothian, Catherine Body from Gay in four, Iona Wilson, East Lothian in five, Coco Croxford, City of Glasgow in six, Freya Beaton from City of Glasgow in seven, and in lane eight, Poppy McDonald from Western Barden. A few 13-year-olds in here, so strong age group swimming into this morning heat, which is good to see. Yeah, some up and coming swimmers, I was just about to say, 13-year-old swimmers uh, mixing it in with some of the senior guys. It's good to see. Yeah, Coco Croxford turned first. She had some good swims yesterday. Quite a heavy programme for her yesterday from Glasgow. Programme run by Ian Wright over there. Yeah, but it's lane two, Alice Cummings. Taking the lead here. And now we've got lane six. All right, that's Coco. Still nicely in the lead after the flying back, but it's uh, just inside her, Iona Wilson. is pushing back, and in lane three, Ailey Armstrong. That was a really good turn by Coco there, showing real maturity on that, uh, that back-to-breast turn. So one of the 13-year-olds, so picking up the skills early doors. Mm. But it looks like uh, lane three, Ailey Armstrong from East Lothian coming strong on this breaststroke as is her teammate Iona Wilson in lane five so really on the first length of the breaststroke they, the leadership has changed all, all completely oh, those East Lothian girls are taking the breaststroke on 
Um, really shifting forward now. And as they come into the turn with 50 to go, it is East Lothian 1 2. Ailey Armstrong and Iona. Not much between them, and Catherine in between. So, see what happens on this freestyle leg. See if Catherine can come back strongly in the freestyle, and she is coming back on the two East Lothian girls. Yeah. Catching up on every stroke, so I think we're in for a cracking last 25. Iona Wilson maybe just stretching ahead. Should be a good finish here. This, they're really working hard down this last 25. So it does look like Iona. She came in on our 2.30, which is the time from the previous heat, but it looks like she's uh, going to get nicely under that for a nice improvement into this heat. And it is Iona, 2.27.28. And then Catherine and Ailey coming in second and third, and the early leader, Coco, uh, just comes in in fourth. So nice swimming there. And then we get that result confirmed there. So all nice... Nice little improvements, incremental improvements on their entry time. A lot of these girls probably only done this once or twice in the last 18 months, so um, nice for them to get some more swimming in now. Oh, that's, it's really good to see, really good to see them swimming fast in the heats. It's a good skill to practice, uh, to come in and, and do lifetime best in the heats. It's, it's, it's excellent to see. So some of these girls will be looking to see whether they can get into these and 200 IM, there is a youth 200 IM final as well as an A and a B. Um, so I'm sure as we move through these heats, people will be looking to, to aim for those finals. There's plenty to swim for here, plenty of final action to come. Yeah, it makes a big difference, I think, in terms of incentivising and, and keeping people ready for finals. Absolutely. So as we move into the third heat, uh, we have in lane one Amber Stevenson from South Ayrshire. In lane two, Amy McLeod, City of Glasgow. Lucy Stowes from Dundee, City Aquatic is in three. Louisa Stoddart, East Lothian in four. Kira Davidson, City of Glasgow in five. Ella Stevenson, Bell Soul Sharks in six. Kiana Kurtzer from Warren de Baths in seven. And Anna Williamson, City of Glasgow in lane eight. So one 13-year-old and a number of 16, 17-year-olds. And it is the 13-year-olds is up there at the beginning, but it's uh, lane one, Amber Stevenson, 30.62. It's good to see uh, so many East Lothian and Warrender swimmers in here. Obviously, Bruce Hallerhan was the head coach at East Lothian, recently moved to Warrender Baths and taken up the mantle. Uh, there's lots of junior swimmers uh, in, this, uh, in this race here. Yeah, absolutely. Taken over from Costas. He's yeah. gone back to, to Greece. Yeah. Big Costas, we miss him around. We do, we yeah. do miss Costas a lot. Yeah. Uh, and it's Kiana, one of those Warrender swimmers who's taking on on this backstroke, turning first 106.64, only 16, 13 years old. Kiana, one of the up and coming swimmers in the age group, in the age group scene. Yeah, she's moving through on this breaststroke, uh, done a great backstroke leg there. And lane three, so we have Lucy Stoves from Dundee, who's really coming through strong on this breaststroke. She's taken a good number of metres off. And another one of these Lothian swimmers, Louisa. And getting closer for second now across lanes. One, Amber Stevenson, Louisa Stoddart, Kira Davidson and Kiana Kurtzer. But no doubt about the person who's taken on this breaststroke by the scruff of the neck. That's Lucy Stowes, who's going to turn with 50 to go. What a leg that was from Lucy. That was a fantastic breaststroke leg changed the field completely yeah, came in fourth or fifth on the back and has come out very clear lead wow. on the freestyle really pushing ahead here and she has got five meters all of a sudden five meters ahead of the rest of the field and i think she's uh, going to be taking this one in lane five we've got kira davidson now pushed into seconds and very close really amongst pretty much the rest of them for that third place fine possibly for youth final places so but it's going to be lucy stove very strong swim from Lucy, but uh, the screen has gone blank, which often doesn't signal good news. Yeah. So we'll have to wait to get confirmation. Well, that was a fantastic swim uh, from uh, Lucy. Uh, that breaststroke leg was phenomenal. Absolutely. So it is confirmed that Lucy was first in that. Lee Ella Stevenson second, 227, and Kiana Kurtzia edged in third, as you can see there, unfortunately. Disqualification in lane five for a technical infraction, which is what they call it nowadays. It used to be a plain old disqualification in my days, but it's an infraction now. So, uh, yeah. well, that's news to me. 
There you go. It just shows you how powerful the breaststroke can be in the in the IM. What a what a swim there by uh, Lucy. And did you, I mean, do you see that? Do you get IM swimmers that uh, aren't very good at breaststroke, or they pretty much always have to have a decent breaststroke? You to be tend able to, do to that? find. I mean, even with Duncan Scott, his breaststroke was uh, probably his weakest leg, but he's turned it into one of his most powerful legs now. Amazing. So we're moving on to heat four. And in this heat, full program, Mary Craig from Sterling Swimming in one, Thanrada McGregor, Warren DeBaths in two, Holly McGill, Hart of Midlothian in three, Orla Adams, Aberdeen Performance in four, Drew McKenzie, City of Glasgow in five, Nula Gow, Geary in six, Rowan Saunders from Hearts in seven, and Louise Edmonds, Royal Wolverhampton, the first of the three seeded heats here. So the central lanes fastest as you go out to the outside lanes. Strong swim from Drew McKenzie. That's a pretty fast fly, 28.6. Not bad, is it? That no, would have done her so pretty well in the uh, yeah. the youth final yesterday if she'd been swimming that. So You should see uh, Holly McGill come through now on this backstroke. I was really impressed with her yesterday on that 200 backstroke. Yeah, she just missed the Scottish junior records yeah. by 0.8, 0.8 one hundredths of a second. So that's held for a while, which was yeah. cracking. So an amazing stock of backstrokers yeah. we've got in Scotland oh, at the moment what is it like yeah uh, we, it's really good and Holly's looking she's got a busy program but the coach has done a great job with her she's doing really well so that's Phil Potter I think is that right yeah Phil Potter so Drew turns first still 103.55 Holly did come through she's now in second place see whether she can hold it in the breast with all her Adams in between and also good good start here from Louise Edmonds in lane eight and Thunrada and Drew's doing a great job holding on here after that strong fly. Yeah, she's still. That's the first time I think we've not seen the leads in any of these heats change on the breaststroke. Mm, yeah. Although Orla has come through strongly on that breaststroke leg and Holly has headed back a bit. And Thunrada out there in lane two is coming through strong in the breaststroke. As is lane eight, Louise Edmonds. So turning with 50 to go. Drew McKenzie. Yeah, Drew's done a great job from the start of this race. Really strong and really took the, the race on. And you can see that shot there with Drew, with Orla on her inside. Nice shot there as they're coming together. And Orla is really pushing back on this last 50. But I think it does look like Drew's got the legs to keep it going. And then Orla and, Ke and uh, Holly McGill in third. And that looks like the 1-2-3. Entry time for Drew is 2.17. And she's nicely under that. That's a good swim there. Really... Solid all the way through, yeah, wasn't it? Chris? Really attacked it from the start. That fly, she had real commitment, you know, and she hung on. It's obviously a fit individual, really strong swim. Very good. So, uh, one, two, three there. We'll wait for that to get confirmed. But, uh, yeah, really ramping up now as we move into these uh, circle seated heats. So, people will be vying for A and B finals now, I would think. So, there you confirm. Drew first, 216, nice improvement. All Adams, 218.13. And in third place. Holly McGill, 2.20.53, so all improvements or thereabouts on their entry time, so good to see. So moving into the next heat, a couple of your swimmers in here, Joanna and Ilsa. That's correct, and uh, I've never seen, I don't think I've seen uh, Joanna do the uh, IM. I've not seen her do breaststroke, so we'll see how that's very good backstroker, but we'll see how she gets on. So Very good. She was uh, she did well in turned her backstroke last night, I think. Yeah, Joanna, Greek she? national record. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, she's one of our scholarship athletes very from good. Uh, Greece. And see how this event goes here. Well, a nice shot there from looking up at the start. So moving in here in lane one, we have Anna Green from uh, Warren de Baths. Aaron Taylor fins in two. In three is Scarlett Ferris from Dundee City Aquatic. In four, Joanna Sasha from Edinburgh University. Nielsen McDonald, Edinburgh Uni in five. Elise Cousins from Perth City in six. Zara Keegan, Aberdeen Performance in seven and 15 year old Melissa Mainwaring in lane eight from West Lothian so pretty even across the middle on this fly maybe Scarlett Ferris 29-4 so we've got a couple of good backstrokers in here yeah. Joanna Anna Green see whether they can push back on this yeah you should see Joanna come through a bit now Alsa McDonald's is, is strong on on all four strokes so she should be there thereabouts very good so pretty much nothing between the three in the front Scarlett Ferris Joanna Sacha and Ailsa McDonald. Good turn there from Joanna coming out. Um, half a metre up on the, the other girls. Yeah. And it is the three in the centre. Turning at the halfway mark. 
There's a great turn by Joanna. She swam out in the States before she came to us and just her oh, skills were very, very good. Greek swimming's going in a bit of resurgence. Uh, yeah. I can't, the chap at the uh, Bucks yeah. meet. Uh, well, that's it. For us, I see at, uh, at Loughborough University, yeah. And really performed well in that. But it is Joanna and now Ailsa. As, as you said, Ailsa's strong in all the strokes. That's yeah. definitely showing up here yeah. on Joanna's shoulder. Well, Joanna's breaststroke better than I thought, so she's doing really well. Uh, they were just just there or thereabouts after the flying back on the heat before. So we'll see where they turn here. 142.89. So they're now second and a half up on the previous heat. So looks like this one's going to be a little bit faster. And it should be a last good last 50 here. Ailsa's really pulled back on, Joanna. And they're going to turn pretty much together as we get the shot coming in at the turn. That's and a good shot there. Yeah, a really good shot as they come out the turn. Sewing Joanna coming out underwater. But it is Ailsa who's got the lead on Joanna, and I think she's going to hold on. Scarlett's coming back strongly in this freestyle, but uh, two Edinburgh Uni girls are going to take this one, one, two. So two, sixteen, seven, eight for Ailsa. Oh, the screen has gone in the stadium in the pool here. The screen goes with a, a shot on it to indicate that there's an issue that needs to be resolved. So we'll just have to wait for that to get you confirmation of that event before we move into the last heat of the girls 200 metres individual medley that, so was, that was a good swim by Elsa she medalled in the 400 IMSD swim, so she's on good form so the taper is going well then by the looks yeah, of things no, it's well. the, the guys are doing doing, uh, doing really well uh, yeah some of the guys there we are confirmation there so Ailsa in first 216.78 John and Satcher 218.03 and Scarlett Ferris in third unfortunately it's qualification in lane six for a technical infraction Ailsa has been re working really hard this cycle uh, obviously last year not, not many opportunities but showing good uh, PB and I think that was a PB for her there as well so good progressions so there's the lineup for the final heat should be a good one Yvonne Brown performed well in the 400 IM Wait for the start. And off we go in this final heat. Isabella Woods of Sterling Swimming in lane two. Rachel Saunders, Warren DeBass in three. Yvonne Brown, Aberdeen Performance in four. Cara Sloshan from Edinburgh University in five. Amy Watson in Verclyde in six. Susie McNair first in seven. Heidi Wren, City of Glasgow in eight. Two 14 year olds in this final heat here. Heidi had some good swims yesterday as did Susie but it's the lane five Edinburgh Uni's Cara Sloshan. Yeah Kira's another scholarship athlete joined us this year from uh, City of Leeds. Uh, I am's not normally a thing but butterfly it's no surprise there because that's her main event. So she's taken a nice lead here on her inside Yvonne Brown. I say very good before I am yesterday. Strong breaststroker historically, Yvonne from East Kilbride, moved up to Aberdeen performance through the pandemic. And strong as well here on the backstroke with Rachel Saunders, as you'd expect, one of that young crop of Anna Green and Rachel and Holly McGill, who really top in Britain in their events. Oh, absolutely, uh, they're, they're all starting to creep back upon Kira. Um, as you said, Yvonne's got a strong breaststroke here, you should see it come through. And it's Yvonne in second and Rachel third. See if Yvonne can push it through. Coming through nicely here on every stroke, just catching Kira. Rachel holding with them, which is good to see. And in lane six, we've got uh, Amy Watson from Inverclyde. And the two youngsters in lanes seven and eight. It's uh, Heidi who's winning the battle of the 14-year-olds at the moment. But it's uh, Yvonne Brown is just very gradually reeled in Kira on that breaststroke leg and is going to turn with 50 to go yeah. with a slight lead. Yeah, Yvonne's in great form and uh, it's no surprise she came through on that on that breaststroke leg. Slightly behind on the split from the previous heat. Um, but she's uh, getting swimming comfortably now to get a good lane in that in that final, I'm sure. How important is it to get the central lanes in finals, do you think, Chris? How do swimmers feel about that? I think it's really important just to make sure there's a strong heat from a from a, a tactical point of view, but make sure you can get in amongst the racing for the finals. It's really important. And see the people around you all the way. That's right. 215.27, so a strong freestyle finish there from Yvonne. So she's 
likely to be central lane for the uh, for the A final. Kiris Larson from uh, Edinburgh University, 216.87, so just over an inch of time. And in third, Rachel Saunders, 220.43. So that should be good final, A final this evening. Some close swimming there, so we'll see how that goes later on. Still some swimming this afternoon with some of the younger swimmers, and um, we'll see whether they can push into that youth and B final. So moving on now, this is the men's 200 freestyle, event 202. We're going to have five heats in here. So some really fast swimmers coming up in the later heats as well as some good age groupers in the early heats as well. Yeah, the 200 freestyle traditionally in, in Scotland has been fantastic. Obviously, Duncan's not here, our Olympic medalist, and uh, but there's still some fantastic history with this event. Yeah, four by two Commonwealth Games champions a couple of times, hasn't it been in the, well, in the recent history? That's it. With some, you know, some great swimmers of the past, Robbie Rennick, of course. Uh, and obviously Duncan is the, has been the shining light for the last uh, four to six years now. Absolutely. Pulling through people in his wake yeah. as we move into this first heat. And in this first heat we have in lane one, uh, Scott Fleming from East Kilbride in lane two, Lucas Brown, Elgin. In lane three, we have Angus Johnson from City of Glasgow. In lane four, William Storer from South Aberdeen. In five, Jake Kirkham from first. In lane six, Mark Scott from Finns. And then we have two Warrender swimmers in lane seven and eight. It's uh, Finn Bremner and Ben Kelly. And in fact, no swimmer in lane five. So Jake Kirkham has decided not to do this race. 26.72 for that first 50 there from... Uh, Lane two, Lucas Brown. So is there a standard sort of strategy for two and three, or is it really horses for courses in this event? I was just looking at the, the first 50 there. Just make sure there's a, a good relaxation in the stroke, a good breathing pattern. Make sure the, the, the guys are feeling relaxed. But what I did notice there was that all the swimmers, these young swimmers, are working hard off the wall, which is good to see. Yeah. Good distance off those turns. Good underwater and uh, holding the breath. Yeah. So Lucas has gone 56 seven. He's been in the lead from the beginning. He's 15 year old. That's good to see. Taking it on, but keeping a relaxed tempo as they go. So coming through maybe in lane seven, Finn Bremner. Um, more in the baths. And it's still pretty close, really, after 150. There's no one broken away and there's no one fallen back, which is good to see. So in for a last, pretty fast last 50, I'd hope. So 127.46. We'll see who's got it le left now, who's stored up enough energy to push on this last 50. Well, it's a hard kick in, so they really have. But it's still Lucas who has been in the lead from the beginning, so he's held it really strongly. Coming through in lane four, William Storer. But it does look like Lucas has really paced this one very well. He's been in the lead from the beginning and stuck there and pulling away as we go at the end here. And he's going to take this in a 157.08, so that's a nice improvement for him on his uh, entry time of 158.9. Now, you really saw Lucas to take on that last 50. Um, he had enough left. It was a really good strategy uh, for him, from Lucas there. And then all swimmers under two minutes there, as you can see on the screen, so that's, uh, that's good to see from that first heat. And we're going to be moving into the, the second heat now, the last of the non-seeded. That's the line-up in front of you. So we have Callum Peebles in one, Finlay Club, in lane two, in lane three is Owen Ray. In lane four, we have Peter Allen from University of Stirling, Evan Davidson, Bundy City Aquatic in five, Jamie Allison, Aberdeen Performance in six, Luke Hornsey from East Lothian in seven, and in lane eight, Ross Errants from South Ayrshire. We've got two 15 year olds here, part of that crop of very strong young male swimmers from East Lothian with Stefan Kravitz making up the triumvirate who'll be coming along late in the next heat I think so Callum and Luke in lanes 1 and 7 see how they go but uh, you'll be looking at the central lanes here yeah well you've got the young 14 year old there as well Evan uh, so he's uh, he's pitching it six years between him and Peter that's amazing really isn't it Evan yeah. had some amazing swims yesterday I think yeah. 4 IM in particular I think he was very strong but, yeah. but it is Peter the University of Stirling swimming. He'll be, I'm sure, incentivized to, to beat the 14-year-old. 25-8. Yeah. 
I'm really impressed with some of the underwater work going on with these young lads. Um, some excellent swimming. So how do you train for that underwater strength? Is it just repeat, 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 or are there particular training techniques that you've got to do to get that underwater working? Very much you need to work on land and in the water and streamline position, making sure that you're strong in the core for the uh, dolphin kick off the wall. Obviously short course swimming is all about being execution off those walls. Um, so there's practice and practice and practice again. 5401 for Peter, taking that out very strongly, Jamie Allison. Can you overdo it with the underwater or is it really as much as you can get? As much as you can and just making it part of your habit in everyday training, whether you're going slow or fast, it's, uh, it's got to be part of your habitual training routine. You just, so presumably you get to the point where you just don't think about it. Just, That's right. It just happens. It's, yeah, it's habit. So this is a strong from Peter, but it is the youngster Evan Davidson who is slowly reeling back on both him and Peter and Jamie Allison, the other 20-year-old. So you've got two 20-year-olds with a 14-year-old in the middle. Here he comes. And he is really pushing through on this last 50. Look at this. He is absolutely piling it on. Taking over one of them. Is he going to have enough to catch Peter? It's going to be tight. It's gonna, he's left it late, but my goodness, is he coming on? What a talent this boy is. And he's just going to miss out, but what a great swim there. 150, 198, oof, 152, 77. Wow. For the 14. So, and, and that was a good swim because it is a national age group record for 14 year olds, Scottish national age group records for Evan Davidson, 152, 77. And in third place, Jamie Allison, 154, 21. Goodness. Wow, that was a great swim. Such maturity for such a, a young age, the way he paced it and brought it through really strong what a talent that guy is absolutely amazing swim there from Evans and that's uh, I think he got an age group record yesterday as well so piling them through yeah and uh, from one young talent to another as we go through these heats as you can see on the screen there this is heat three this is the first of the seeded heats we have Miles Lapsley Edinburgh Uni in lane one Jude Lydiard from Edinburgh Uni in two Greg Fairburn University of Stirling in three Another University of Stirling swimmer, Henry Baker in four. Charlie Poole, University of Stirling in five. Cameron Travis, Aberdeen Performance in six. Stefan Kravich, East Lothian in, in seven. And Lewis Hammond, South Ayrshire in lane eight. So this is where you get quite big disparity in times on entry times anyway. 148 through to 155. See how we go here. Off pretty hard in the centre. Henry Baker, University of Stirling, and Charlie Poole, University of Stirling in five. And it's a Stirling one, two, three at the moment. Yeah, the Stirling guy's taking it on from the start. Really strong. Slightly up on the previous heat. So it's Cameron, yeah, so the Stirling guy's in the middle with Cameron Travis as well. Youngster from Aberdeen Performance. Really good execution on those the skills around those walls again. Really relaxed stroke, building into each turn. So there's Henry, entry time 148, so you'd expect him to be taking this one out. Still pretty close with him and Charlie. And then in third is now Greg Fairburn, so there's the three University of Stirling swimmers, Edinburgh Uni guys, Jude Lydiard in lane two coming through. And coming through in lane six and seven, Stefan and Cam and... Uh, Cameron. Yes, it's good to see again mixing the seniors with some of the junior swimmers here, being able to push on these young swimmers and help them improve as well. So 120.64, so that's a good three seconds up on the previous heat, so that goes in line with him doing his 148 entry time, pulling along Charlie with him, and then in lane three, Greg Fairburn as well. This is a really strong swim from Henry here. That's very solid swim here by the looks of things. And he's coming in with five to go. Very strong heat swim. Clearly wanted to go out well. Swim it fast. Four, 148.27. So nicely under his entry time. Second place was Charlie Poole sneaking under that 150. Nice milestone to do. 149.92. And then in third we have Greg Fairburn. 151.19. So nice swims there. Always good to get under these milestones. 150s, two minutes. It is. So and, and just check your race strategy in the heat and you know, so you can just tweak it for the final and find the extra half a second where you can. So will these guys, you think, be going flat out in the morning just to make sure they get in? Or well, will there be a bit of tactics going on, do you think? There'll be a bit of tactics just to refine in the, the tactic that you want to uh, employ for the evening. But um, I think they'll be pretty close to where they need to be. 
Yeah, we saw that quite a lot in the sprints yesterday, where actually in finals the times were not they were not all much faster than the heat swims. So it looked like people were really going for it in the morning to uh, to make sure they got in. Yeah. So moving into this fourth heat, we have Michael Flynn from City of Glasgow in lane one. In lane two is Angus Allison from the University of Stirling. Andrew Bertoli, Ellesmere County College Titans in three. Reg Lloyd, University of Stirling in four. Martin McInnes, City of Glasgow in five. Alex Sargent, University of Stirling in six. Ian Rose, Warren de Bass in seven. And John Taylor, Aberdeen Performance in lane eight. So some swimmers in here heard strong swims. Angus Allison in lane uh, Lane two, strong 4 and IM yesterday. Actually, we don't have a swimmer in lane five, so no Martin McInnes. Um, and so, yeah, some strong swims. Andrew Bartoli had a good 800 free, I think, yesterday. He's one of the Anglo-Scots, quite a number of Anglo-Scots coming up this year. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, Reg Lloyd turning first, 25.8. Equal second, Alex Sargent, Ian Rose, 26.02. Yeah, there's some... Uh there's really good swim uh, yesterday with Angus in the IM. Great race between him and Evan. That's right. Absolutely cracking race, really. Yeah, yeah. See where we get to as we go through the race here. It's still central. Reg Lloyd still out there. Uh, Going to turn at the hundred. No, it's not yet. Reg Lloyd 51.99, so slightly faster on the previous heat. 53.99, sorry. So slightly down on the previous heat. And it's starting to ramp up now. These guys are building into it. Yeah, uh, you can just see them gradually building in, which is good. And in lane three, Andrew Bertulli as well. He's swimming strong, 17-year-old, keeping up with Reg. And I think Angus in lane two is gradually winding up as he tends to do in these races. So it is now Andrew Bertulli, 127, 22, 41. Slightly down on the previous heats. See what these guys have got, and they come into this final 25. Well, some race here. These boys this are really going absolutely at it. cracking. Yeah, here we go. So who's going to get this? Do we think? I think Reg has really yeah. put the burners on in this last 25. But Andrew is not letting him get away, and is absolutely keeping with him. And it is going to be Reg. 149.69 for Reg. In second, Andrew Bertoli, 149.98. And Angus just edging out Ian for third, 152.79. That's a good swim there. Really good second half of the race from them guys. Uh, a good strong finish there by Reg. So both under the 150 again. So that's four swimmers now under the one, 150. So it's good to see. And we're moving into this final heat. Stephen Mill, another one of the stalwarts of... Scottish swimming in lane four. Pierce Greening from University of Stirling in one. Rory McKinnon, City of Glasgow in two. And three, Jack Bonsall from um, City of Cambridge. Stephen Milne, City University of Stirling in four. Evan Jones, Millfield in five. Liam McLaughlin, University of Edinburgh in six. Jack Muncie, Uni of Stirling in seven. And Finlay Saunders, Edinburgh Uni in eight. We saw Stephen and Jack in the 800 last night having a having a good good race Stephen took it but Jack was was there or thereabouts got a 17 sorry 18 year old age group Scottish national age group record Stephen's so experienced uh, he's uh, he knows exactly what to do when to make the move he's, uh, he's a veteran of the sport these days but yeah. he's uh, he still works extremely hard look at taking it on straight from the start Stephen Absolutely. We, we expect Evan to just sit on his hips and, and try and move through as the race goes on yeah, I was quite impressed to see 27-year-old still doing 800 freestyles last night. That was uh, quite something. Yeah, Stephen, so Stephen's mindset is just uh, all about training, all about being the tough swimmer. And uh, But if you watch his walls, look how good he gets off those push-offs really strong. Absolutely fantastic. So it is Stephen who's taken it out with Jack on his inside and Evan on lane five. And these three have broken away. You've also got in lane... Lane seven, Jack Muncy, who's having a nice swim here as well. As I say, after these Strong's 800 yesterday, you'd be expecting him to, to move it up, but there's no doubt about the uh, person who is taking this one out, Stephen Milne. He did have an entry time that's quite substantially faster than the others, but there's absolutely no chance he's taking it easy in this heat to get <laughs> himself into a, a final. He is, he's absolutely going for this. I don't think Stephen does easy. Does he not do no, easy? Oh, no. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> So Evan Jones, 121.08, and in third is Jack Muncy now pulling through. So uh, 
slightly against the uh, the run of in coming in in the terms of entry times, but it's not surprising given the form Jack's on at the moment. Strong swim in lane one as well. Piers Greening from University of Stirling. So that's going to be a good race for a third between those two, but there's no doubt about the person who's going to take this event in this heat. It is Stephen Milne, 145-1. So that's Ooh. a very strong, substantially faster than the rest of the uh, swimmers. 149.57 for Evan. Good swim there. Then third place, 151.03 for Jack Muncy. So some strong swimming across the board there. And we'll wait to see where that puts us in terms of A and B finals. So that's the finish for that heat. 145.10, 149.57 and 151.03. As we go through, that's at the moment on the screen was likely A finalists. And then they're the likely B finalists, unless we get some swimmers this afternoon who can get in that time. So we'll wait and see. And there's uh, no youth final in this one, so just A and B. So strong swimming there. So that's uh, that look, that's building up for a good good final. I think Stephen would be the favourite for that one, but then the rest yeah. of them, it's going to be a pretty good race, as they. Now there's some healthy juniors in there as well. It's really good to see Evan finish strong and dip under the 150 there. Um, really strong swim there. So I think that's all eight of them were under yeah. 150, which is pretty good. Uh, pretty good going for a final. Yeah. So we're moving into the next event, which is the women's 100 metres butterfly. We've got uh, five heats in here. And uh, in this first heat, we have Iona Wilson from East Lothian in, what, in two, Helen Stoddart from East Lothian in three, Amy Ash, East Kilbride in four, in five. We've got um, Holly Simpson, Laura Frizzell in lane six, and Catherine Buddy in Gary in seven. 100 fly, strong start there, lane three, that's Helen Stoddart, she's had some good swims this weekend, and a couple of youth finals as well. Just 14 years old. 14, so 30.3, that's a pretty swift yeah, good first start 50 there. there. Yeah. Got our uh, teammate, 17 year old teammate on our outside, let's see if Helen can uh, hold on for the full 100 here, she's really taken this one out. Hold the stroke race, starting to dive a little bit, but she's holding the stroke just, just about. Good turn. Very nice there, and she's. let's see if she can hold on. Strong finish here in lane six as well from uh, Laura Frizzell from Heart of Midlothian. But it does look like Helen is going to hang on, and is she going to get under her entry? She does, 106.76, good to see. Yeah, good swim there, really good last turn. Kept the momentum going for the final 25. So there's Helen first, Iona Wilson second, and Laura Fazell into third. As you can see, confirmed there. So all the girls in and about their entry times. She's swimmer slightly out. So as the weekend goes on, do swimmers do the swimmers start getting just a bit more fatigued, or do you think they build into it, or is that really? depend on the individual well, I think it depends on the individual a little bit what kind of events they're, they're used to but also how they prepare and how they recover race to race is, is important so I'm moving into heat two in lane one we have Anna de Grossa from best Susan McNair from first in two Alice Mackey Harder Midlothian in three Isabel Wood Sterling Swim in four Heidi Wren City of Glasgow in five Millie Milne Warren de Baths in six Kiana Kurtzer, Warren de Baths in seven, and Aaron Taylor from Finns in lane eight. So, uh, ranging in ages from 13 for Kiana in lane seven through to 17 for Anna in lane one. And it's pretty close across the pool. No swimmer in lane two, sorry. Susie McNair has withdrawn from this race. You can't see from that angle, but really very, very close across four or five swimmers here. It is Heidi Wren, good youngster from City of Glasgow. She's had a really good meet, finaled in a number of events, flying back in particular. And she's pulling ahead here nicely on this third 75. Breathing every stroke? Yeah, well, so you're either breathing every stroke, getting the air in, normally breathing pattern of every two, doing it best, but some people like to get that air in on each stroke. So she's really pulled away nicely. It was all level pegging when we saw this shot 30 seconds ago, but Heidi has pulled away nicely in a 104.67. So that's nicely under her entry time. Second place, looks like Isabel Wood. 
41 as you can see there and Kiana Kurtzer comes in in third 105.68 so all of those swimmers in or thereabouts their entry time so they'll be hoping and gearing all of them eligible for the youth final as well as B and A so we'll see the youth finals are in the hundreds and fifties as well as the turned I am yeah, it's really good to see these young swimmers doing multi events young Kiana there came third in, in 105 she was just in the 200 IM as well. Absolutely. Great to see. So we're moving into heat three. We have, this is the first of the seeded heats. Um, and in heat lane one, we have Natalie Jones from Warren de Baths, Kirsten Laurie, Edinburgh University in two, Imara Bella Thorpe from Edinburgh Uni in three, Yasmin Perry, Aberdeen Performance in four, Guy Alcaraz from Aberdeen Performance in five, Lauren Patterson, Edinburgh Uni in six, Abigail Stemp, Edinburgh Uni in seven, and Louisa Stoddard, East Lothian in eight. So it's uh, Edinburgh Uni versus the rest in this competition, <laughs> by uh, this race. Yeah, interesting story about Amara. She's actually from Kenya. So she was born and raised in, in Kenya and come over here for university. Very good. So how long, what, what year at uni is she, she in? She actually came last year in, in the COVID year, which was obviously a challenging year. Um, so she's in her second year with us. And did the university team manage to train pretty much through, or was it affected by, by in the same way as everybody? Yeah, we're affected the same way. We're lucky enough to get in the return to swimming. Scottish swimming really helpful in, uh, in that return for the elite athletes so we could train for the Olympic Games. So it's a very strong swim here from Yasmin Perry. Fastest qualifier, 58.77. Only person with under a minute qualifying. And it's going to form in lane Guy Alcaraz beside her. See whether she'll be getting under the minute, but I think... 59.97 for Yasmin, so that's a nice heat swim for her. Gaia second in 101.41, and in second and third was Amara, 103.45. She, how does she feel about that? Do you think? I think she'll be quite happy with that. So she did really good in the in the 50. So um, I think she'll be pretty satisfied with that. Hopefully, they'll get a, sec a second swim. Excellent. So we're going to move into heat four in a minute. There's a firm confirmed result. Um, we're moving into heat four, penultimate heat of this women's 100 fly in lane one. There's going to be Stella McCarty from City of Glasgow. I think she pulled out the turn at IM, so I wonder if she was saving herself for this. Iona Morley from Winchester in lane two. Madeline Robertson, Kronos in three. Kiana McInnes, University of Stirling in four. Lucy Grieve, South Ayrshire in five. Katie Taylor, City of Glasgow in six. Karen Kelly, Glasgow Uni in seven. And Zara Keegan in lane eight so we've got Keanu now the old stager against uh, the young upshot and Lucy Grieve in this race I know uh, well it used to be Keanu was the, the young one coming through but Lucy had a fantastic 50 I think she did she get the Scottish junior record oh. or age group record last night she yeah. uh, she's doing really well and credit must go to Byron who's constantly producing young swimmers and uh, has done a great job with Lucy and she's looking really strong so, uh, 100 is probably Lucy's main event. Keanu really more a 200 flyer, or she, do you think she's moving into the 100 as well as she's, as she's getting older? Yeah, Keanu's got a good 100, and uh, I think uh, Lucy's got a really good uh, 50 and building up to the 100, where Keanu's coming down from the 200. And how does that make a, you know, is that, how does that work, do you think? Um, well, different training techniques, but I think obviously Keanu's going to have a really strong back end here, as you're seeing. And, uh, but Lucy's doing a really good job just sticking in there. Uh, this is a good swim for both of these ladies here. So they'll be looking to get some solid swims here to get them into the central lanes for the final. And solid is, is that. 59.12, just over the minute for Lucy, 103.6. And Madeleine Robertson, 101.59. And do swimmers fluctuate you know, up and down the distances depending on age or just how they, you know, what... what they can there? do, yeah. I mean, uh, Tame Bruce is up next, you know, came into the programme years ago mainly on 200 fly but really had a sprint mentality so really settled on the on the 50 100 and she did a great pb a massive pb in 100 freestyle yesterday which was uh we knew she was in good form but that was really good to see so she's a scottish record holder in this uh on the short course so we'll see how she gets on absolutely that 100 women's 100 freestyle is really hotting up isn't it they've oh. got a good pool of people coming through for in good time for Commonwealth yeah. Games really next year. Yeah, Matt Trodden, one of our coaches at Edinburgh, he's done a great job and working with Lucy obviously before now the cohort that are coming through, he's doing a great job with so those. You've got two KTs, you've got yeah. uh, Tane, yeah, yeah, it's a good 
and Emma Russell at Sterling Uni as well. That's right, so yeah. um, really good. And do you think so? Lucy and Emma are now training together. I mean, does that really does that help having people around you that can can push you along and keep you going? Push you. I think it obviously helps you improve and helps you work if someone's pushing you in training on a daily basis. Absolutely. So into this final heat, we have Anya Slesser from Aberdeen Performance in one, Meg Finnan, University of Stirling in two, Jennifer King, University of Stirling in three, Tame Bruce, University of Edinburgh in four, Cara Sloshan in uh, Edinburgh Uni in five, Katie Shanahan, City of Glasgow in six, and Emmy Hutchison, City of Glasgow in eight. No swimmer in seven, and it's Tane taking it out 27 3 7, so that is the fastest split so far. Yeah, look at that turn, she's really worked hard on the skills underwater. She's looking very relaxed here, but Kira, Kira should come back a little bit here, but Tane's doing a really good job here. Very strong all the way through, fast flip over on the turn there. I guess in the short course event, turns can be as important as the, uh, if not more so than the swimming. Absolutely. And that was really good execution by Tane. Let's see if she, what she ends up on. It's a really good so she's really taken this one out. 58-11, so a nice morning swim for her. Second, Kira, 59-63. And in third was Jennifer King, coming in in 101-33. So that was a good swim by those ladies there. Tane really working hard all season on her execution. Stroke counts underwater kick. And you can see there, it was, a, it was a really good execution race. Very nice. That's the line-up there. So we'll just wait for the uh, list to come through that you'll see on your screen, just to give us an indication of A and B finals. So there'll be juniors as well. So that's the first eight. So all of those girls would be hoping to be at least in consideration for one of those A or B or youth finals. We've still got some heats this afternoon, mainly youth swimmers, I would think. So... We'll wait to see how that pans out, but uh, I'm sure they'll all be hoping to get a final swim and see whether they can improve on their heats. And we're now going to move on to event two of four. So men's 100 breaststroke. Five, six heats of this. Strong pedigree, obviously, in Scotland over the breaststroke over the recent and historic years. Absolutely. And talking of that, we've got a young 13-year-old Josh Elliott in this heat who uh, has really been going well. 111 for a 13-year-old is pretty, pretty good going on 100 breaststroke. It's not bad at all, is it? So he's in lane three. And in lane four, he's Harder Midlothian. Uh, in lane four, Adam Scott, City of Glasgow. And in lane five, you've got Ben McLaughlin from Geary. It's really impressive to see. I mean, the impact that Adam Peters had on... Uh, a young Josh there has got a PTS stroke with that high <laughs> tempo um, to go for it. And so what particular physical attributes do you need to be able Because not everyone can do that, I'm thinking. Oh, so right. so what, what is it about the, what is it you need to be able to, to get right to be able to do that? Well, you've you got to see with Adam, he's, you know, it's high tempo, high power based breaststroke. So getting into that streamlined position, which is overlooked. Uh, and Josh is doing a great job here, holding on to the tempo. He's not stopped. <laughs> He's uh, wind he him up and he's <laughs> gone, hasn't he? And he's actually ro reeling in Adam and in the middle, and he's really coming back at them. This is a cracking race to start us off Go on, on this hundred breaststroke. <laughs> he's doing a great job, and he here. is doing a great job. But I think Adam may just hold him off. Yeah. But um, let's see where we get to. But it's uh, a really good start to this hundred breaststroke with Adam Scott. One ten oh three, one eleven oh four. Ben McLaughlin and a one eleven twenty eight for Josh. So all of those boys sneaking under their entry times which is great to see i suspect most of them did those times in the last month or so so hard to come to this meet and, and get them again which they've managed to do so that's good to see it was really good there because you had a different styles and each of those three lads was different styles of breaststroke it's just it's one of those events breaststroke where you just have many different ways to do it and uh, we'll no doubt see that Again in heat two, as we've got Jack Mitchell in lane one from Aberdeen Performance. Max Pelosi from City of Glasgow in lane two. Miguel Stewart Geary in three. Sam Harrison, Perth City in four. Brandon Aitchison, Bucky in five. Luke Hornsey from East Lothian in six. And Robson Miles from Scotia in lane seven. So pretty much in a line on this first 25. Not unexpected. Their entry times are all within a second and a half of each other. But it's lane four, Sam Harrison, strong breaststroker, has come through the age group ranks and is uh, taking this out on this first 50. But it's pretty close 
always amazes me the different styles in breaststroke. You go cross section, you know, there's different ways of doing it, efficient long breaststroke, high tempo, power based breaststroke, undulation, flat, uh, and you've got a, a array of different techniques in this. It's funny, I mean, it's breaststroke pretty unique in that. I mean, there's all sorts of straight arms and not straight arms on front crawl, but breaststroke does seem to be just completely different techniques across the pool here. Yeah, breaststroke's like another sport. <laughs> <laughs> decathlon all in one event is yeah. it? so we're coming up to uh, the wall here and it is Sam who just edging out 107.18 so that's nice improvement for him on his entry time so that's good to see Luke Hornsey strong swim 15 year old from East Lothian 107.56 so a nice two second improvement for him and Robson Miles from Scotia coming in on the outside lane in a 108.97 so second up on his entry for him so that was a good heat there nice strong swimming from Sam and Luke. Yeah, very good swim. Good to see these age groupers having made it through the whole pandemic lockdown. I mean, in the last 20 months, most of them haven't swum for 12 of them at least. So no. pretty resilient to show carrying on through all of this. Absolutely. So great resilience in ch such a challenge in 18 months. Full programme of swimmers in this heat so we're moving into heat three Thomas Christie from Aberdeen Dolphins in one Jamie Littlefield Warren the Baths in two Murray Pritchard Perth City in three Marius Kringelis from Edinburgh University in four Mika Van Blurk Warren the Baths in five Connor Mitchell Warren the Baths in lane six Matthew McMillan Incas in seven and in lane eight Kieran Breschner from Aberdeen Dolphins got 14 year old Connor Mitchell in here 15 year old Matthew McMillan and then 17 and 18 year olds in the main and we've got pretty close though even despite that age difference across the field maybe lane one Murray Pritchard from Perth 3142 so that's slightly up on the previous heat yeah, it's all pretty close in here good turns good skills very close even coming up this third length it's not really an awful lot between them I think maybe it's now Marius who's pulling away that's a close up of Mika I think in lane five He's just behind Marius. He's got a Warren to swim as either side of him. Mika in five and, sorry, Perth Murray Pritchard. And then coming up in lane six is Connor Mitchell, the 14th year old. So this has been a really good race, but I think it's going to be Marius who does take it 106.62. Mika Van Blurk Warren to 107.17 seconds. And Connor Mitchell, 107.31. So all of those boys, good swim there from all of them. Just there or thereabouts in their entries. Yeah, close race there. One of the closest ones we've had this morning, and we're going to move into now the circle seeded heat. So, fastest swimmers in the middle and through the heats as you go through it. And in this first heat, we've got Matthew Garrity from Inverclyde in one, Charlie Trotman, Edinburgh Uni in two, and then there's a string of Edinburgh Uni swimmers in three, Josh Mitchell in four, Nicholas Quinn in five is Ross Young, Dominic McCarthy in six, Finlay Wallace in seven, and Alexander Projak from City of Glasgow in eight. So, how are you feeling about these Edinburgh Uni swimmers? Well, I've got a vested interest in this. This is uh, Nicholas Quinn's last competition ever. He's going to retire after this. Oh, my. The veteran Irishman, uh, 2016 Olympian. So, it's mixed emotions for, for Nick in this event. He wanted to, uh, the pandemic caught him out for the 2020 Tokyo. Couldn't make the trials. Tough time for him. So, he's, uh, he's looking forward to just having a bit of fun here and going out in style such a shame with the uh, pandemic with that Olympics you know so many swimmers just you know there was like Nicholas missed out or just didn't quite manage to do it and then the yeah. next year was a year too late for some of them as well, well and that's it's, right. uh, Paul was saying yesterday in, you know across para and swimming people like Ellie Simmons it was just a, a year too far and uh, but others who came in youngsters who came in and took the opportunity and well, that's right grabbed it so yeah without doubt so we've no swimmer, I think, in lane eight in this one. So let's see if Nicholas can go out with a... So is Nicholas is 100 his main, or is it 200 or 50? Well, he swam in the 2016 Olympics in Rio on 200 Brasso's main event, but I think he's probably just got enough fitness to hold on to this uh, 100. So let's wish him well as he goes through, and he's got his teammate, Ross Young, on his outside to keep him, keep him sweet, as it were. And then on his inside, Josh Mitchell and Charlie Trotman, another Edinburgh Uni swimmer, going well in lane six is also uh, Dominic, the Uni of Sterling swimmer, but it's the two Edinburgh Uni guys, Ross Young, 28-58. Yeah, Ross has started the season really well. He's trying really well. 
And they are both pulling away from the rest of the field. Maybe Josh Mitchell uh, swimming in lane three is, is just behind them, sticking with them. See whether he can pull it off in the final 25. But it is a lovely swim here from Ross, Ross and Nicholas. Still sticking with him and actually coming back a little bit here as they get yeah. to the end. Sure Not letting them bragging rights in this, but uh, 108. Yeah, that's a strong swim by Ross. Ran there and thereabouts on his best. That's good to see. Nicholas 101.10 and Joss 103.53 around his best as well. So Edinburgh University 1.234 there. So quite satisfying as a coach to see your swimmers at the top of the... Yeah, it's always nice to see. It's... Uh, it's bittersweet with uh, with Nick well, after what he's been through, but uh, it's good to see him enjoying his swim. And he's always been he's been here for ten years now in, uh, wow. in Scotland. So clearly liked it. Yes, and hit one veteran to another, Craig Benson. Absolutely, absolutely. But you've got Shane, I think, as well. So he's a young Irishman who's just uh, yeah, just come into Edinburgh Uni. So he's a great prospect as well, isn't he? Very so. much so. So we're moving into this fifth heat um, in lane one. We have Connor Morrison from Aberdeen Performance, Thomas Cannon from University of Stirling in two, Robert Bryce, Aberdeen Dolphin in three, Craig Benson in four, City of Glasgow now, five, Willie Mellington from Uni of Stirling, Yusuf Betu from City of Glasgow in lane six, Aaron Dolan, Ren 96 in seven, and Lewis Bailey, Aberdeen Performance in lane eight. So Craig's been one of these swimmers that has moved around a bit as well. So he was yep. in, out in East Lothian, I think, started his career, came to Warren the Baths, then it was at University of Stirling, I think. That's right. And then off to City of Glasgow now with Ian Wright. Yeah. But he's, he's working over, recently got married, working over there now, uh, but still keeping his swimming going. Obviously enjoys swimming, but it's great to have these athletes still around, competing. Um, Fantastic for the younger swimmers to see and look up to, isn't it? Absolutely. And look at, look at him now. He looks as strong class. as ever, really, doesn't he? He's not... Yeah. Uh, no, not fading. So... You know, what keeps somebody going at 27 years of age when they've done all they've done? Oh, he made the Olympics and you know London yeah. Olympics, didn't he? When he was that's right, must have been 18 he, or something. He I mean, in, he was in Rio as well and yeah. Commonwealth Games around that as well. He's, uh, he's just a strong athlete. I think just being around it becomes part of your life and who you are, your identity. That's a strong swim as that well. Is very good swim there. That's fast in his entry, so I suspect that's the fastest time he's done since the pandemic mm. came in. William Ellington, nice there at 101.57, and Robert Bryce coming in in a 102.04 in equal third with Yusuf Betu, 102.04. So Yusuf will be benefiting from having Craig in his, in his sights and training every day. So a good example of why having these more experienced swimmers must, must be good for you. Yeah, well, that's why it's saying with us, with Nicholas, having his experience around, showing the, the young guys how to do. And then we've got young Oshin in here, um, who's bouncing off that, another Irishman. So let's into this final heat. We've got uh, Don Bissett from University of Stirling in one, Hugh Takamoto from Edinburgh Uni in two, Callum Melville, the youngster from Nova Centurion, broke his age group 50 metres record twice yesterday, 15-year-old, Eugene Cook from Edinburgh Uni in four, Rory Dixon, University of Stirling in five, teammate Greg Fairburn in six, and another Uni of Stirling swimmer, Andrew Starter in seven, all 19, and Emil Muraski from Warren de Bass in lane eight, but a bit of a talent lane three, Callum Melville um, Anglo Scott swimming with uh, Nova Centurion, oh, yeah. Nottingham I think, Nova Centurion yeah, that's Nottingham, yeah. so see whether he can uh, push Yashin oh, I suspect, I know he's got his own 15 year old Scottish age group record already um, Callum, so we'll see whether he can break that, we'll get some info on that as we go through, but let's focus on Yashin at the moment who's going out very, very strongly. Is there a fast going out here and hold on, or how does he yeah, normally swim? Yeah, that's a strong swim. Sometimes he can get a little bit overrated, but it looks like he's doing really good control here, uh, working on his strokes, efficient. Uh, looks very, very strong on this third 25. Rory Dixon on his inside, young Scott, 19, moved to uh, University of Stirling during the pandemic from... I think he was one of the Ayrshire swimmers, yeah, I think, North, North Ayrshire, I think, yeah. yep. Yeah. And, uh, but Callum Melville, the young 15-year-old, is sticking with them, but Yushin has really swum a nice swim here, a nice race, looking very good, 59.78, so that's slightly under his entry, so get the coach's view on that in a minute. Second, Callum Melville, 1.0098. I'm thinking that must be pretty close. Scottish junior record as well as 15-year-old record from Callum Melville, so that's an amazing swim there. 
And in uh, third place, Rory Dixon, 101-18. So, views on Yashin and Callum there. Oh, what a, what a talent. Uh, Callum was really strong from the start, held his stroke together really well. And Yashin uh, has done a really good job to hold his stroke all the way through. That's the second time he's been under the minute now. So, uh, it's good for his confidence, hopefully, take it on and have a good race tonight. Nice heat swim there to get under the minute for yeah. that. So, that looks like that could be quite some final with uh, Craig and Yashin. And Callum's not going to be too far behind them, as well as William Ellington and Robert Bryce. So we'll look forward to that one later on this evening. The evening session starts around 5.15, I think. So uh, join us back for the finals if you want to see these swimmers again later in the day. And we're going to move on to splash and dash for both the men and the women. First the women, 50 freestyle, and then the men's 50 back. And we've got six heats in both of these. Uh, and in the women's 50 freestyle, here's your lineup for this first heat. You've got Karen Kelly from Glasgow Uni in lane two, Alice Mackey from Heart of Midlothian in three, Tasha Simpson, Warren Bass in four, Melissa Mainwaring, West Lothian in five, Gabriella Leasing, Lessing from Ren Bank six and six, Helen Stoddart, East Lothian in seven. Helen's had a couple of swims already, I think, this morning. And uh, Fast qualifier Natasha Simpson. She did a really good 800 free yesterday, so she's gone from the sublime to the ridiculous, 800 to 50 in the same meet, which not sure that's that common, is it? Or is that... Uh, I think no, this will just be a swim to get the pace up and just get her, right, get, yeah. her, get her buzzing. Yeah, it's good to see a lot of these young swimmers, as I said earlier, just do, doing everything from the sprint to the, to the IM. Showing her 800 form at the end, <laughs> coming in in 27.34. Yeah. So that's a really nice swim for Natasha. That's... Uh, Nearly a second, oh yeah, nearly a second on her entry time. So that's lovely to see from Natasha. Melissa I mean, wearing a youngster, second, 27-4. Just being edged out by a more experienced Natasha there. And Alice Mackey, Hart of Midlothian, 27-92. So that was, uh, that was, that was a nice start. Yeah, that was really well paced from Natasha. Good swim. And a good swim from Melissa, 15-year-old, 27 point. We're going to move into the second heat here. Keep coming fast here in the 50s. Lucy Lucas in lane one from Edinburgh Uni. Anna Green, Warren de Baths in two. Georgina Hawkins from Millfield in three. Olivia Mason, Warren de Baths in four. Kerry Gillespie, Aberdeen Performance in five. Jennifer Murray, Edinburgh Uni in six. Amber Stevenson, South Ayrshire in seven. And Yuri Horn from City of Glasgow in eight. So their entry times are down on the first one, so they'll be wanting to beat there. And the two teammates of Natasha in lanes two and four are trying to keep up with her. And they are turning first and second strong first 25s from those two girls just there and they're coming down with 15 to go and it is in the central lane Olivia Mason and in lane two Anna Green who are taking this one out and they're after their teammates time from the first heat and they do get it both of them wow 26 78 for Olivia Mason that's a over a second improvement for her second Anna Green 27 03 nice swim from her as well and 27 42 from Yori Horn so yeah it looks like those girls were Spurred on in the first from the first heat really from Natasha. Really good swim, Olivia. There, washed her in the last ten meters, head down into the wall. Really made the difference to accelerate into that finish. And yeah, different schools of thought on the fifty. Some people just breathe at the turn, and that's it. You know, that's it's it. Uh, it takes a bit of practice to work hypoxic uh, around that. Uh, work at a breathing pattern, or no breathing at all for that fifty. I think easier to do long course, I suspect, <laughs> than yeah. it is short course. Quite hard not to breathe on the turn, I'd have thought, but. Uh, yeah. So do you do special training for hypoxic then? Yeah, there's a bit of training you can do, lots of underwater work, like hypoxic breathing training. Yeah. So we're moving into heat three. We've got Amelia Mardell in lane one from Alveston, Katrina Stewart, Weston Martin two, Emmy Hutchison, City of Glasgow three, Anna de Grossa, best in four, Millie Milne, another Warren de Swimmer in five, Louise Edmonds, Royal Wolverhampton in six, Nat Natalie Bruce, Brock in seven, Emily Cumming, Kinross in eight, so this is really close across the field. There are only 0.6 between them on the entry. And it looks like it's they are another Warren de Swimmer, Millie, who's been spurred on by her teammates as well. See what she can do in this heat. 27.19 entry. She is going to get a touch. Another 26 points. So 26.97 for Millie. That's quite a nice relay team they've got there. 16-year-olds, four of them under 27. Not bad. You've got Louise Edmonds, Royal Wolverhampton, 27.07 in second. And Katrina Stewart, Western Bartonshire, in third. Yeah, the Warren de girls really churning up on this sprint freestyle yeah. often get that I think don't you where you get a cohort of people That's in right. a club or in a, in a group together and they can really push each other on yeah so we're going to move on to heat four 
in lane one, Elaine Murray Aberdeen performance, Vicky Russell, University of Stirling in two, Saskia Wade, City of Glasgow three, Katie Goodburn, University of Edinburgh four, Yasmin Perry, Aberdeen performance in five, Anna Morgan, Uni of Stirling in six, Police Cousins, Perth City in seven, and Sienna Perry, Aberdeen performance in eight. So your Katie Goodburn in here, he's the first of the circle seeded heats, bit of a Breaststroke freestyle specialist, yeah. Katie. Moved over from Warrender, uh, coached with by Costas. He's doing a great job on the sprint, made some massive improvements this season already. Always so gets a cracking start, Katie. I, I, you can see off the block, always right out there at the beginning, and looks like she is powering ahead on this yeah. slightly straight arm technique, no breathing. Now she's coming into the wall, very strong, and she's going to take this one for sure. 25-74, that's, that's a nice one for yeah. Katie. Good heat swim, get that out the out the leg. Jasmine Perry, 26-1-2. And then the youngster, Saskia Wade from City of Glasgow, 26-44. Now, Katie's done a great job moving over from Warrender, so in the city, so not a big move from Murrayfield to uh, the city centre, but uh, she's doing a great job. It's really good to have in the programme. Another one of our scholarship athletes. But it is a big step, isn't it, from age group? Well, she's still in the same city. She's living in Diggs. She's, uh, yeah. you know, living with different people, having to get a different routine. So, you know, it's... Uh, That's right. And we really encourage that. And she's, uh, she can still go home to mum's at the weekend. <laughs> get her Sunday roast. That's right. I'm sure Susie would be delighted seeing her at the weekends. Yeah. So moving into Heat 5, you've got Zoe Gidden, Zoe Gidden, Edinburgh Uni in one. Four Edinburgh Uni swimmers here. Amara, Bella, Thorpe in two. Nicole Rishi. Is it Rishi? Ricky. Ricky. Italian. We were debating that last yeah. week. Well, we didn't know whether it was cappuccino or whether it was... Uh, yeah. But it's Ricky, Tame Bruce in four, in five. Ethan Morgan, University of Stirling. Erin Robertson, University of Edinburgh in six. Drew McKenzie, City of Glasgow in seven. And Ariana Stokes, time with them. So the Edinburgh Uni coaches are going to be struggling with you, not with them, taking splits today in this heat. <laughs> five Edinburgh Uni girls. They're doing really well. Here goes Tane again. Just shows you how much Ooh. that execution is. She's sprinting really well just now. That's amazing out there from Tane. She has 25-1-9. That is nice. Well into her entry time. Drew McKenzie, 25-99. That's a strong swim from her out there in lane seven. 16-year-old. Uh, and in third, Elena Morgan from University of Stirling, 26-34. That's a cracking swim from Tane, I think. Yeah, she's really working hard, as I said earlier, this, this year on her skills. You can see off the turn how powerful she was there. Not one of the tallest Tane, you know. You no. see, you see Freya Anderson there at six foot two, and you've got yeah. Tane must be about yeah. half a foot sh shorter than her, but not much different in terms of speed. It's, uh, it just shows you how important those skills are, and uh, especially short course and Tane is, even though she's good to start with, she's uh, worked even harder to get that right. Yeah, because uh, she's the been cycle. there or thereabouts Tane for a long time. She was a strong age group swimmer, wasn't she? And she's um, yeah. stuck at it. Which yeah, is she uh, graduated uh, this year and is going full throttle to the Commonwealth Games. Excellent. She favour long or short course, or because some swimmers do, don't they? There is a there's sometimes a favour favourite. Yeah, sometimes I think she's she's good at both. She's really really good at both. So final heat here: Emma Scobie from Kirk and Tillich in one, Kira Stricker from South Ayrshire in two, Lucy Greaves South Ayrshire in three, Emma Russell University of Stirling in four, Katie Robertson Edinburgh Uni in five, Anya Slesser Aberdeen Performance in six, Isla Yule South Aberdeen in seven, and Ava Simpson Edinburgh Uni in eight. Strong start there from. Emma Russell, that you'd expect, strong sprint freestyler. And on our right side, Katie Robertson from Aberdeen to Edinburgh Uni, sorry. And Lucy Grieve in third, but it's going to be Emma, 25.03, not bad. Yeah, that's a good swim. Very fast from Emma, 27, 25.76, Katie Robertson and Lucy Grieve third. So Katie, really a breaststroker through her age group life, and all of a sudden, yeah. She's a front crawler. Freestyle. Uh, we're just looking at the sprint program for her. She's good at fly as well. She's good at again credit to South Asia and Byron. Seems to have a real good habit of producing these swimmers. Uh, yeah, and Katie's got a mixed bag there. Yeah. Uh, older, is her older sister is at Erin, Edinburgh yeah, Uni as well. Isn't she? Right. So she stopped for a while, didn't she? And then yeah. she just came back. So she, she just, seems she, to be going strong now. She took a bit of time out. And we. She came back. She wanted to get back in. She's doing a great job. I think she was third in the 50 breaststroke yesterday. Which oh, very brilliant. strong, yeah, no, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. But is it normal for somebody? So Katie really was a you know age group record holder in breaststroke, and now is that you know is it unusual to go from the strokes like that as you go through? Or well, I think you know as an age group program, you you you, you practice everything, and she came through on the did a bit of butterfly work, really strong fly swim, a good freestyle. Obviously, a main event being breaststroke, but we just want to give a a, a variety of uh, opportunities for these swimmers. So. 
moving on to the 50 back for men we have yeah, six heats four or five heats in this sorry um, and in this first one we have Jack Lorimer from Ithan in two Gria van der Meulen Sterling Swimming Kieran Lennox Aberdeen Performance in three Ewan Beatty Warren de Bass in four Alex Thompson Warren de Bass in five in six Jacob Wood Elgin in and in seven Connor Mayers from Mount Kelly in lane seven Gria van der Meulen is he not Alison Shepherd's son yes that's why I was speaking to Alison yesterday ah. yeah she's here coaching with Sterling very good actually introduced uh, Lucy Hope and uh, Alice Shepard together so they broke, Lucy broke the records and it's uh, Greer who is going out very strongly in this 50 backstroke he's the 16 year old Sterling swimming uh, dad is a coach as is his mum and it's also strong here from you and from uh, Alex Thompson from Warrender in five and I think it's going to be Greer 27.53 nice swim there from Greer Got good genes there. That's good. Yeah. Alex Thompson second, 27.56. And Ewan Beatty, 28.49. See Benji Gillingham's here as well. So Nick Gillingham's yeah. son. That's an even further pack in the past. Uh, yeah, 100 well, breaststroke. Was he Olympic silver medalist, Nick? Olympic I think. So I actually swam with Nick Gillingham back in my Birmingham days. So I know Nick pretty well. And uh, yeah, there's, uh, it's good to see him. So we're moving into this second heat. And I think Scott Gobi is joining me this afternoon and his mum is uh, Ruth Gilfinnan, one of the Gilfinnan trio. Yeah. Coached by their father, Jim. Yeah, Scott's a good guy. I coached Scott for uh, about four or five years. Good guy. So moving into the second heat, Dean Fern in one, Jake Kirkham in two, Kieran Breschner in three, Travis Davey in four, Ewan McLeod in five. Six is Ryan Broadley, Andrew Brody seven, Owen Carroll eight, and we've got in lane one, it's like phenomenal Dean Fern, South Aberdeen swimmer, broke his own 13 year old age group records yesterday, going strong in this in the lane, but it's lane five, Ewan McLeod from Shiverers, who I think is going to edge it, but Dean's not far behind, 26 61 for Ewan. Dean Fern did get second, 27 1 0, and Owen Carroll third in 27.32 so a strong swim there from the youngster as well as Ewan yeah, good swim there Dean 27 one for a 13 year old pretty strong that not bad at all is it see whether he can keep that going so that was a confirmed 13 year old Scottish national age group record for Dean I think that's the third or fourth from him this weekend Watch him as we go through the years. Moving into the third heat, William Stora in one, South Aberdeen, Alex Sargent, University of Stirling in two, Raiz Varley from University of Stirling in three, Zach Speakman, University of Stirling in four, Scott Gibson, Edinburgh Uni in five, Keir Edgar, City of Glasgow in six, Carl Barrett, Aberdeen Performance in seven, and Lucas Brown, Elgin in lane eight. Look at that underwater strong there, taking every one of those 15 metres. Scott Gibson and Zach Speakman. Zach had a strong 200 back yesterday. Scott Gibson really taking this out. Oh, he's going here. Scott's having a real good crack at this Scottish record. What is the record? It's 4 0. Got it. Oh, Got it. 23 94. That is a Scottish, a Scottish record. senior record for Scott Gibson. Yeah. One very happy coach here. He's trying yeah. to contain himself. He's doing very well, but yeah. he, he's having a little whoop in the corner here. Yeah, he's been chasing that for the last year, and he's been doing a really good training block. And uh, oh well, great swim, pleased yeah. for him. Very good. You could just from the start, he was yeah. absolutely on it, wasn't he? He's so uh, twenty-four eighty-one for Zach Speakman, second rise, Wally twenty-six fifty-five. So that's our first Scottish senior record of the weekend, I think. Nice to see Scott doing that. As we move into heat four, we have Jude Lydiard, Edinburgh Uni in one, Jamie Ferguson, Aberdeen Performance in two, Connor Massey, Aberdeen Performance in three, Craig McNally, University of Stirling in four, Mark Ford, City of Glasgow in five, Cameron Travis, Aberdeen Performance in six, Alexander Harris from Stirling Swimming in seven, and Brendan Johnson, 
in lane eight. So we've got a bit of a changing of the guard shifting in this heat. Craig McNally, the old timer with Mark Ford, who represented Great Britain at the European Juniors last year. William Stort in lane that previous heat, unfortunately, we had a disqualification in lane one for a technical infraction, but the remainder, Scott Gibson, Zach Speakman, and Ryan Varley. Confirmed. So let's see whether Craig can respond to Scott. <laughs> Do you think he'll change his race plan now, having seen that, or will he stick with what he had already? No, I think Craig uh, is more of a, a 200 backstroker, but you'll certainly see a good quality from Craig McNally whenever he swims. Oh, he's got a 24.06. It's not yeah. too far away, no, is it? No, he's uh, not. He's not. He, he, I noticed in his heat yesterday, he did very steady for the first 150 and blasted the last 50. So maybe yeah. see whether he can do that from the start today. Yeah. Again, been around, good to see him still swimming and being competitive. Again, another swimmer who has changed his routine. He was at Warrender, then went to the city of Glasgow and is now at University of Stirling. That's right. So let's see what we get here. This should be good heat. We've got some uh, fast, young 50 backstrokers in here as well. But it's Craig who, again, making every inch of that 15 meter allowance underwater on these events. And he's taken this one out. And he's, again, almost 15 on the turn as well. Mark Ford beside him, going very strongly. And it's going to be Craig with Mark, 24.38. 25.09 for Mark, which is a nice swim for him. And 25.48, Conor Massey. Cameron Travis, 26.04. So all of those guys, they are thereabouts on their entry time. Jamie Ferguson just edged out by Cameron. So, University of Aberdeen strongly represented in that heat. And we're going to move on to the final 50-back heat. We have in lane one, Tom Robertson, Aberdeen Dolphin. Ian Rose, Warren de Baths in two. Sam Pease, University of Stirling in three. Martin Walton, Stirling University in four. Uh, five is also University of Stirling, Jamie Robertson, as is six. Brogan Hyde in seven. Oscar Smiley and Stephen Clegg, University of Edinburgh in lane eight. Had a world power record yesterday. Yeah, two. <laughs> I heard he, was, he wasn't he was in full training at the moment, just no. enjoying himself. So you should enjoy himself more often, really, shouldn't you, from well, the sounds of it? Well, that's it. Off the Paralympics, he just wanted to take it uh, control, but having good fun here. So let's see how this one goes. Off the strong start. Swim, strong swim from Martin here. So a very good start in lane four from Martin Walton. 23-7 entry. And it's pretty close across the board, actually. But it's definitely Martin taking them all out. He's going to be there and thereabouts. Uh, and he's got a 23-7-3. 24 dead. So second was Jamie Robertson, 25-31. And in third, Sam Pease, 25-36. Stephen Clegg, 26-1-5. Very close there. Between 5th, 6th and 7th. 100s between 5th and 6th and 6th and 7th. So good swimming there. So, let's see where we get to on... Let's look at these lists as they come through. See where we might be with finalists. So that's the first eight. Pretty much guaranteed, I would think, an A or B final. And then we'll see across the next eight... See whether anyone this afternoon can push through. But there's a youth final on that as well. So uh, see where we get to on that. But some nice swimming there. So we're now moving on to event 207. This is the women's 200 breaststroke. We have five heats. Um, good mix of ages in here as well. Anyone particular we should be looking out for in this uh, this event, do you think? Well, Cara Hanlon had a, a, a cracking year last year. Even in COVID, she put some really big uh, PBs in place, and she's swimming well, won the 50 breaststroke last night, just shy of the Scottish record. So looking forward to seeing her swim. Um, and we'll see, see look, a raft of juniors in here as well. And we've also got Katie Shanahan. Not one of her normal events to the breaststroke. She's clearly yeah. having a... A fun weekend this weekend, if you can call it fun, swimming for three days all day. Yeah, well, she's she obviously come off the ISL swimming really well and won experience for such a young swimmer. Did she not there. get sort of, she was 
highly ranked in terms of yeah. the total points. You're not the, one of the most improved youngsters or one of the best performing youngsters, I think. Yeah. Is that right? Without a doubt, when you're a medalist woman, she, she's got a really good backstroke and having to go at the breaststroke here. Um, she's a very talented swimmer and she'll another experience coming up at the World uh, Short Course. So how do you find the ISL? What's your view on the ISL? I mean, it's, it's the same but very different, isn't it? You know, yeah. It's just got a completely different feel and vibe about it. Well, I'm a big fan of team swimming. I think you get a little bit more from each athlete. We get it at the British University Championships where you're representing the team and um, you get a little bit more from the swimmers because they, they don't often get the chance to represent the team. So ISL concept, really, really strong. And just interesting kind of stealing points and, uh, you know, I yeah. think for the younger swimmers, I know my, my kids enjoy it because it's just a little bit different and, uh, and it's not all about the times. It's, uh, it's right. as much around how you race and a bit of the tactics, which makes it quite interesting. That's it. And, you th and in terms of the swimmers coming in and out of it and, and the wider programme, has that all worked well in terms of blending it in? It's not been too disruptive? Or? Well, it's been a bit of a challenge for, for swimmers, uh, you know, where you're regularly competing on a, it's, not like an, it's like an NC2A type of thing where you're racing more often, so you have to think about your training strategies around that. So it's really, for us coaches, it's been really a challenge to look at how we look at the, at the season in its entirety uh, and how we periodise that training around the regular racing phase when ISL's coming. So it's been a challenge, but it's, I think it's been welcomed by most coaches. Good. So you mentioned NC2AA. We'll go on to this heat just now and we'll yeah. come back to that. So I'm not sure whether everyone will know that, but it's an interesting yeah. thing to talk about. So we'll uh, get back to this heat though. So in lane four, it is Emily McGee from uh, Carnoustie uh, in lane four. Not sure there'd be many Carnoustie swimmers here. So it's great to see Emily taking this one up, 201.33. Uh, so it's a two and a breaststroke, all about holding good efficiency, streamlined through the water, working at stroke counts. Uh, these girls are doing a great job, starting to pick it up now. So can you do an Adam Peaty stroke for 200? No. <laughs> <laughs> As two high temp is more about really good efficiency. Uh, maybe sure, of course, you could get away with it, but um, you really have to work at that underwater and streamline through the stroke. So Josh Elliott, when he's doing a 200, is going to have to change his style then. Is that, uh, yeah. is that, uh, we'll see where we get to when we get the men's 200 yeah. tomorrow. But this is a cracking race with Amy, Emily, who's really led from the beginning. And she is going to edge this one, I think, if she can touch it properly. And she does. That's a great swim. Ooh, two 100s. Very Emily close. McGee, 243.86. Second, Caitlin Coy Gamble in second, 243.88. Two 100s behind and Amy Bell in third, 245.71. And that's a nice three second improvement for Emily so she'll be pleased coming from Carnoustie to get that good swimming from her so we'll just whilst you mentioned NC2A for those who don't know do you want to just give us a quick tour around what the NC2A is all about and, and how it's different from what we've got over here what's well, the American coaching uh, the American um, college system and uh, it's uh, where they all compete with each other between the kind of September and uh, March April where they've go to the NC2A championships and they regularly compete with each other in team competitions and end up in the finals then they run the men's and, and, and separate uh, women's competition through that period of time and I think unusually it's a yards yard swimming isn't 25 it so it's yards, 25 yeah. yard swimming so you know they're, they're probably up and down yeah. before you even know it which that's seems right. slightly archaic but that's yeah. in America they've, they've stuck with the yards for the college swimming haven't they so and that's uh, where the majority of swimmers like Caleb Dressel and all came through that system um, and there used to be a phase, a lot of British women went over there in the 70s, 80s and 90s because that was the setup. And now in Britain, we've managed to set up our own universities who can hold the swimmers in the UK, which is great to see. Well, that's great. It's exactly. And it's the same within the, and even within the postgrad is why you see a lot of like Viseas at, at Loughborough coming to do a postgraduate uh, in the UK uh, because they can get the opportunity to do that. So it's 36, 35. And is that part of your job really is about maintaining that UK universities program and attracting the youngsters as well as the, the more mature swimmers to keep the program going? Absolutely. It's not just about the undergrad program, but obviously looking at the postgrad where we're able to offer a really good scholarship and it's competitive in there between the universities in the UK. So, you know, we need to be able to look at athletes to come in and study and, uh, and compete for us. But not just UK swimmers, also international swimmers uh, as well, to just get the mix in and get that better experience in. So absolutely, and you can add value to to the program through through that experience. So at halfway here, 
117.98. Just run through the swimmers. It's Jessica Schultz in one from Perth City. Ailey Robertson, South Ayrshire in two. In three is Elizabeth Brearley from Blackpool Aquatics. Holly Lumsden in four from Harder Midlothian. Sarah McNaughton, Warren de Baths in five. Laura Harrison, Glasgow Uni in six. Amy McLeod, City of Glasgow in seven. And Tegan Black, East Lothian in eight. 243 through to 245 on this. So 117 first 100. So they'll be looking to get under those entry times with that start, I would think. Is, is 200 breaststroke one of the ones that's more even split? Or, or is, are they all the 200s? Roughly the same in terms of the drop-off from the 100 to the 200. Well, what or is there no, no real general generality? Well, what you generally you see is the efficiency through the 150 and the way the swimmers and then that pick up in that last 50 and that sense happen uh, long and short. But, you know, you, you get a, a, a widespread of different tactical abilities in here. But what's interesting here, you've got Ailey Robertson, which is the third Robertson sister after Erin Katie. Uh, so she's got a big act to follow with the sisters here. Um, swimming pretty well in this race. Yeah, second place. So, like quite a bit younger than the, the, the two older sisters. That's right. Hadn't appreciated there was a third. <laughs> and it's a nice race here. And it's a lane three, Elizabeth Brearley. And she is going to take out Ailey. But Ailey is pushing her hard as well as lane seven here, Amy. And it is Elizabeth, 243.64. Second, Amy McLeod, 244.47. And Ailey just edged third, 244.53. Just a nice marginal improvement on her entry time. So uh, nice swimming there. And we're moving now into the circle seated heats. So um, faster swimmers in the middle of the pool. And in this third heat, we've got Fern Crichton from Perth City in one. Then Radha McGregor, Warren de Baths in two. Nula Gao, Geary in three. Annabelle Goy Johnson in four. I suspect I didn't pronounce that correctly. Is it Guy? Guy, yeah. yeah. In lane five, Ailsa McDonald, Edinburgh Uni, Louise Edmonds, Royal Wolverhampton in six, Caelan Hall, Aberdeen Performance in seven, and Bridget Le Mazurier, Edinburgh Uni in lane eight. So another strong showing from your swimmers in here. Yeah, traditionally we've, we've always had good, strong female breaststrokers throughout the programme, throughout its history. It's nice to see the girls stepping up here. A slight pause. I don't know if that's to let people take their breath. But the whistle's gone, so we're just gearing up for this third heat. Looks like we don't have a swimmer in lane one. So no Fern Crichton. The rest of the swimmers are ready to go. Nice shot again, looking up. No spectators here this weekend due to the COVID restrictions, but the balcony full of swimmers watching their teammates. Oh, and it's... Uh, Nice first 50 here, pretty even. Lane four, that is Annabelle, who's taking this one out. Uh, strong as well here in her teammate, lane eight, Bridget, but it's Annabelle in lane uh, four, and her teammate, Elsa. Elsa had a good turn at IM earlier on. Yeah. So yeah, Elsa's in good form, so she'll be pushing and moving through, but. You can see the efficiency that we talked about with Annabelle just hanging at the front of the stroke before she executes the next cycle. Swimming well here. So, as they come into the first 100, it's the Abed Edinburgh Uni swimmers who have pulled away 20, 20, 21, 20 year olds, a couple of 16 year olds in lanes two and three. And 17 and 19 for the rest of the field at 110.80. Pretty solid first 100. Yeah, really good for things. Manipel. Elsa started to sort of claw back a little bit here. Really good efficient swimming from these ladies. So it's 200 both of their events or the 100, which is... Uh, yeah, Annabelle's like came in, she's been in the programme a few years now. Was at the Europe World Junior level when she joined from down south. And London, uh, really good swimmer, really good swimmer to have around, around the program. She's swimming pretty strong here. And there's quite a few English swimmers coming up to the, the Scottish universities, isn't there? And increasing yeah. numbers, actually. So you've clearly got David in your squad, but yeah. there's uh, quite a few guys coming through, which is good to see. No, it is good. You know, when you're looking to come and academics at Edinburgh plays a key role in the decision of the athletes, and obviously swimming can, is an important factor too. 
Yeah, you've got to remember a lot of these programmes at the universities are at some point, despite the fact you've got Craig McNally swimming at 29, you do have to move on. So having a yep. strong education background really helps as well. It does, it does. And so they're coming in here to finish. And it's Anna, Annabelle, 229.19. So that's pretty much there or thereabouts on her entry time. So she you be pleased with that? She'll be pleased. You know, she was pretty comfortable, I think, through that. And I think she'll be able to drop. Uh, a couple of seconds for tonight. It's a really strong swim. I think that might even be a PB for Elsa. So um, I'm not sure. So 228.99 was the entry, but oh, that could right. have been a long, could have been a long course yeah. conversion. So um, I think a lot of these entry times, some of them are, yeah, you know, from 2019. Yeah. Some of them are from it. from a week ago or two weeks ago. So it's quite hard to tell where that, people are coming into the event. That's so, the uh, interesting thing, obviously, with this meet with a gap. In, you know, non-competing, so it's good to see all these swim young swimmers and swimmers here doing so well. English equivalent was a couple of weekends ago, was it last weekend? Just last weekend, yeah. So some really fast swimming there. Yeah, looked, uh, Sheffield, yeah. Sheffield, a fast pool, people yeah. tell us. I'll come, we'll come on to fast pools in a minute. Let's just introduce these these swimmers. Martha Reeves from Dundee City Aquatics in one, Kira Davidson, City of Glasgow in two, Katie Shanahan, City of Glasgow in three. Katie Robertson, Edinburgh University in four. Yvonne Brown, Aberdeen Performance in five. Anne Hutchison, Edinburgh Uni in six. In seven, Lucy Stowes, Dundee City Aquatics. And in lane eight, Katie Coventry from Tynemouth. So what makes a fast pool? Oh, well... Or is it a myth? <laughs> depth of the pool can make a difference. Um, you know, just feeling and, and space around the pool can, can, can make a difference. But, I th yeah, I think it's a bit of a myth. <laughs> But it does get some people's heads, doesn't it? it? Does, you know, it does. And people think oh, it's my favourite pool. I'm going to swim well there. Or yeah. And if you want to watch uh, an advert for efficient swimming, and watch Katie here, uh, Katie Robertson in the middle, really long stroke, stretching out. So what's the benefit in the glide there? Because a layman might think she should be pulling sooner because she's using glide space so what's how does that how's the mechanics behind that well i think you need a really strong core streamlined through the stroke and to make sure that you're gliding forward and saving energy every stroke you do you can sit in that position and save the energy and gradually build through so you can have a strong finish absolutely beautiful stroke isn't it yeah. absolutely lovely with the two city of glasgow swimmers kira davidson and katie shanahan on her inside and yvonne brown Aberdeen performance in five. From memory, Vaughn's usually got a good second lay, you know, a second hundred on these two hundreds, if I remember yeah, rightly, from her age group days. She'll move through for sure. A little bit slower from before, but you'll see Katie just hold that efficiency through the next part of the race. So Katie Shanahan sticking with her, though. As you mentioned, ISL experience that Katie has had over the last few months will stand her in great stead moving forward yeah uh, it's great that she can get exposed to all these different things as she moves through her career outstanding talent mm, Katie Robertson though taking this out Katie has pulled away from Kira and Yvonne is moving for moving through the field also here in lane seven Lucy Stoves youngster from Dundee City Aquatics another good young talent 15 years old But it's Katie Robertson and Katie Shanahan who are stretching this one out. Be looking to consolidate their swim to get a good lane into the final. And Yvonne has moved into third. She's holding a stroke all the way to the end now. So Katie Shanahan's having a really good swim. So Katie Shanahan's 231 entry, 228 for Katie Robertson. And they're going to be in around the 230, yeah, 230, 77. Look comfortable for both those ladies. Look nice, isn't it? Yeah. That promises to be another good final this evening. So tune in to the live stream later on. So first Katie Robertson, 230.77. Katie Shanahan, 231.32. And in third, Yvonne Brown did come through to 234.98. So you'd expect the three of them. A strong swim from the youngster Lucy Stowes in five as well, 238.08. Just under her inch of time. So she will be no youth final in this event, so hoping to squeeze into B, but we'll see where we get to on that. So moving on to the last, this is the last heat 
of the women's 200 breaststroke. In lane one, we have Amy Watson from Inverclyde, Saskia Wade, City of Glasgow in two, Erin Robertson, Edinburgh University in three, Cara Hanlon, Edinburgh Uni in four, Orla Adams from Aberdeen Performance in five, Alwyn Cook, Edinburgh University in six, Erin Taylor from Finns in seven, and Charlotte Hardy, another South Ayrshire swimmer, in lane eight. There we go, the third Robertson all competing in this event. It's quite Aaron. nice, isn't it? Yeah. And this is where you'll get a, a difference when we talked about technique from KT Robertson to Cara Hanlon. Cara Hanlon, much smaller athlete, so tempo and rhythm is much more her thing while still staying efficient. So a little bit more tempo involved in a stroke, but still great efficiency as she moves through. So more thrust and glide yeah. in this. You can see the difference here. That's, uh, it's great to see the different techniques in breaststroke. Still, still looks lovely, but yes. in, a, in a different way. You know, it's, uh, yeah, a little bit more tempo as she goes through. And she has quickly established a nice lead here 33 24 so slightly faster than katie in that previous heat so already showing a bit of intent on her inside yeah, is erin yeah car is in good form car obviously from the she's from stornoway in the Didn't western isles yeah so she's looking forward to going and seeing the, the family at christmas i bet i bet I wasn't aware that she was from there, so uh, yeah. that's quite a. Quite you not know, sure there's that many pools in the Western Isles to. Uh, uh, well, she does. She gets special ashes like a hero over there. No, I bet. Well, quite right too. Yeah, she's, she's a special swimmer. Yeah, very much so. There's quite a few Shetland swimmers. I've noticed yeah. that were down. I heard that they were worried about Storm Barrow was okay. going to prevent them coming, but they uh, it managed to drift away before uh, they needed to get their ferry. So good to see the Shetland swimmers. I was talking to Peter earlier on. It's good to see Shetland here. Absolutely. Peter's a stalwart of the, the DRP and age group kind of national setup as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's been around for a while and doing a great job up there. And they turn clear Cara in the lead, 149.95. So there are thereabouts for the previous heats. Second is Orla, third is Aaron just holding that form as she goes through not forcing it just staying relaxed holding the efficiency in this final part There's no need to panic all are coming back at her a little bit oh there's a strong breaststroke as she'll be very strong very technically strong so into the last 25 all are pushing it on in this race so she looks like she's up for the race and is Maybe looking to just out-edge our Cara for a psychological advantage going into the final. And I think she is going to do that, 2.30.01. So that's uh, faster than Katie in the previous heat, but not quite as fast as Annabelle in the heat before. So that's really building up to a very close good six or seven girls all in around the 2.30 mark. So look forward to that one later on. There's a confirmed result for that final heat. We'll get the full line up in a minute from all the swims again only an A and B final this afternoon, this evening for that one and there's the first eight so that's your provisional final and the next eight will be your provisional B final and see opportunity for some swimmers this afternoon maybe to sneak in there if they can improve their times so we'll wait to see more difficult on the 200s if there's no youth final a lot of the swimmers this afternoon are more likely to get into youth finals if they can sneak in but uh, let's see where we get to so we're now moving on to event 208 this is the men's 200 fly tough event we've got six heats here and uh, we'll wait to see how this one pans out yeah, it's a soft spot for this event this was my event uh, many moons ago a lifetime ago now <laughs> very good Were you preferring short course or long course, or did you not really? Well, in the last 50, it didn't really matter which one yeah, we was in. <laughs> the last 50 of 200 fly is possibly the worst experience you're going to have, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get off to go on this 
Uh, heat, we've got Kai Connolly, City of Glasgow in two. Joe Carter, Delting in three. Zach Slater from East Lothian in four. James Burnett from Warren the Baths in five. Fraser Tetlow from Geary in six. And Dean Fern, South Aberdeen, already on a number of records. So for those in the audience listening who don't know, where, where, did, where was your swimming, where did your swimming get you? What was your highlight of your swimming, swimming career, would you say? <laughs> Well, believe it or not, with the accent, uh, I'm one of those Anglo's that managed to come up and uh, and uh, break the Scottish record on the Tour de Fly many moons ago. Very it's, good. It's long since gone, uh, but uh, you know. But a lot of coaches do move on from swimming themselves into yeah. coaching, don't they? I mean, there's a there's a long line of people yeah. who do that. So, did you go straight into coaching, or were no, you? I did some development work first, and then I also worked alongside in the City of Edinburgh program many moons ago, and worked alongside Tim Jones, who has established that program, and uh, that was my injection into into coaching. Tim, now the senior guy for British swimming. British swimming, I've seen him here. We had a good catch up. So, and obviously his son is swimming uh, Evan Jones, which is uh, was good. He was born in Scotland. Hadn't made the link that yeah. Evan was Tim Jones' son. There you go. Yeah, well, Evan was born in Scotland, and so therefore can swim for Scotland. Very good. So a nice swim here from James. Just to confirm Dean Fern isn't doing this 200 fly. Um, and it's a strong swim from uh, from James here. Yeah, he's holding his tempo really well. I was a bit concerned they're really strong in that first part whether they were able to hold it together but um, he's doing a really good job James here. Uh, tenacious swimmer James. One of the 14-year-olds in this event. Also, Zach Slater on his inside and coming through Joe Carter from Delting in three strongly in this last 50. James is holding on well. This is where it really hurts on a two-hundred oh, fly. Yeah. And you see, he came up quite short, about five metres. I know the coaches will be working at those underwaters. You can see the hips are starting to drop. He's working hard to keep them up, but he's doing really well. He's doing Ooh, really he's well. looking sore, but he's doing well. Entry time. 221 and he's going to go nicely under that well done James 216.9 that is a nice swim from James you could see the lactate building up in that last 25 but he held it on it's really difficult you come to that last turn and your lungs are bursting and you feel it in your muscles you really need to try and get underwater and have a good uh, five six meters uh, at least for these young guys maybe more as they get old, as they get older yeah. Not the event to go out too hard in and find you've got nothing left, I don't no, think. I don't think I ever learned that lesson. <laughs> it's amazing how many 200 flyers don't, I think. Yeah. So we're going to move on to the second heat. Finlay Davis, Midlothian in one. Callum Sinclair, West Lothian in two. Ben McLaughlin, Gary in three. His teammate, Carl Mitchell, both 15 in four. In five, Reuben Kelly from Dumfries. Ben Kelly, not related, I don't think. Warren Bass in six. Cameron Shaw first in seven. And Connor Stewart. Sterling swim in lane eight. So this should be on paper, pretty close race. A couple of seconds between them all. See how they pace it. So lots of stamping of feet. Is that necessary or just for show, do you think? I think it's just to make sure that the back slat is in place. It's a little bit of show as well. Um, but again, these guys taking it on. So all about staying as relaxed as possible, efficient. Much like the breaststroke. Trying to get good placement, good undulation, good breathing back. Get as much air into the lungs in this first part of the race as you can. So there is a, some people do breathe every two and some every one. Is that what's the what's the kind of well, I think it all comes physiology down behind that? All to rhythm. I think on a 200 fly, uh, really need to get as much air in as possible, but still staying efficient. So it's either going to be a one or a two. Uh, so does the breathing disrupt the stroke? Then is that is that one of the challenges with breathing too much? Yeah, well it can. If it's your rhythm, you saw Michael Phelps. He would breathe every stroke. Um, a lot of flat strokes, getting your head just sitting on top of the water, and making sure you're getting that air in. So a nice three swimmers here, lanes four, six and eight. So that's Kyle, Ben and Connor. And maybe also in lane seven, Cameron Shaw and out there in lane one, Finlay Davis. But it's definitely close between Kyle, 104.95 and Connor, 105.15. So 104.95. So that was a 30, 35, second 50. Let's see how they go on this third one. This will be a good indicator as to how they're pacing it and whether they're 
He's doing really well, Kyle. He's got a lovely flat stroke. Hands sitting out to the side a little bit. But he's a lovely flat stroke. Breathing every stroke, yeah. and he's still, still really that third 50. Wow, that's you know that last screenshot we had yeah. him and a number of others pretty close together, but he's stretched out yeah. to three seconds, two three second lead, so 140.52. Let's see if he can hold this on. Still looking strong as yeah. he comes up this uh, no. 25. Really still at it. Ben Kelly coming through in lane six as well. See how this turn goes. Yeah, he's about. Six, seven metres off the wall there for Kyle. That's excellent last turn. So a nice, strong, really strong swim. Well paced from Kyle. 2.19 entry. I think he's going to get nicely under that. He's really ripped this field apart. Ben Kelly's come through very strongly as well in that second half. 2.16.36. So nice, nice swim there for Kyle. Three second improvement. Ben came through strongly. 2.19.31. So he's second and in third. Finley Davis. Uh, the screen on in the pool has gone up blank so we're just going to wait to get confirmation of that race for the uh, always a bit nervous for a swimmer a bit nervous for a swimmer when you see that screen though isn't it you just yeah. don't know what's going on sometimes when it pops up when if there's a relay you're thinking oh here we go who is it going to be and the drama builds so we'll wait and see what the consequences of this screen is going to be hopefully just to do with a time adjustment rather than somebody Having their race DQ'd. Not been too many of them this weekend. Uh, what should you expect with this is a top notch of swimming in Scotland, so you would be hoping there wouldn't be too many disqualifications. But Yeah, it's good here. I mean Kyle swam that really well. A lot of these young guys are swimming technically and tactically really well. And there's confirmed. So two sixteen for Kyle, two nineteen, twenty thirty one for Ben and a two twenty for sixty five. No DQs, so been some sort of time adjustment in there, but good to see all the boys' times counting. Very demoralising to do a turn, I, uh, a turn fly and then be DQ'd. I think that would be. Oh yeah. Did you ever recall that happening with you? Um, possibly once or twice. <laughs> Blocked it from my memory. Good. So in lane one, in this thirty, Tom Nicholson from Delting, Andrew Brody, lane two, Aberdeen Dolphin, Kieran Lennox, Aberdeen Club, Aberdeen Dolphin, in lane eight. So final heat see what these guys do so 159 in the first heat to to aim for here Edward Rednick 156 the others slightly further away from that but see whether they can do a nice big jump that Callum did in that last heat mm. Young mm. Evan and Matthew we just see how they get on they can spur each other on Matthew's a gutsy swimmer never gives up and Evan's already had some cracking swims this weekend, a couple of age group records. So let's see where we get to. And already out there in lane one, he's uh, flying off. Lane there three, though, goes. Gregor Swinney. So strong start. Sorry, no lane four, so no Edward. So we've got Gregor Swinney, City of Glasgow swimmer, 24. Again, same with the Glasgow swimmers here, looking that hanging front stroke, keeping it relaxed. Uh, Very flowing, isn't it? Nice. Yeah. yeah, he's looking really long here as he approaches this last part of the race. So we're turning 56, 78. Just to apologise for the break in the internet connection a little while back. So unfortunately, you'll have maybe missed a few of the swims that we've had. So apologies. We'll blame the technicalities of it all. So uh, we're back now, which is good. Hopefully, you didn't miss too much of the swimming. And there has been some cracking swimming. But in this heat, it's a really strong swim here from Gregor Swinney. He's holding it together well. So what happens on this last 50. So 128, so just on, just over the first heat of Igor. So he and Igor are aiming in for a good swim against each other. Strong coming last 50 here for Andrew Bertoli. Ellesmere College, he's really paced this well on this final 50. And he is edging up towards Gregor. See what he's going to, what ton of time he's going to do. 
McGregor's just, I think, going to edge it, but Andrew's strongly finishing, and he does finish. Oh, good time. So just over two minutes, but uh, the screen has gone blank in the pool. So we will have to wait and see. The line for lane seven stopped after the first 50. That's probably what it is then. Mm. So there we go. Mm. So confirmed. Andrew Patoli, 201.45. 201.41, Gregor Swinney second, 201.69, Benjamin Chewin 25.97, so that should be a good final, we'll see the lineups here, and it will be Igor at the top, followed by Andrew I think, and Gregor Swinney, Albert Bangen, Callum Rose, Peter Allen, Benjamin Chewin and Mark Elric, so good final there, and that, that's your provisional B final, so we'll wait to see what happens this evening, so again, just to remind those just joining, those finals will be later on this evening. After 5.15, I think the first one starts. All the way through to about half seven with relays at the end. So we'll have the mixed medley relay this afternoon. Strong, exciting mixed freestyles. Edinburgh team, club, club team record yesterday, I think. Yeah, we're really happy with that. The guys really enjoyed it. Uh, led off with the 21.5 with David, which always helps. <laughs> um, uh, so that was a good race, and we've got more races uh, this evening. Two teams going in tonight. Good fun having the medley, mixed medleys, mixed yeah. freestyle teams. It's good to get every men and women in together. It's a bit different, a bit more tactics involved. Um, working on your strengths throughout the programme, it's good. So we're moving on to the women's hundred back. We have six heats here. Um, backstroke, something at Scottish Swimming in the women's is absolutely stacked at the moment. Oh. You've got Cassie Wilde, Kathleen Dawson, Kathleen, you know, Katie Shanahan in the 200s, and then you've got the, the youngsters with Rachel and Holly and Anna. You know, it's uh, really strong for Scottish Swimming at the moment, isn't it? Very much so. There's a young crop of girls coming through on this backstroke, but, you know, Kathleen and Cassie uh, and Katie, young in herself, uh, showing how it's done. So we're in this first heat. We have Lucy de Grossa from Best in lane three, Coco Croxford, City of Glasgow in four, Rebecca Cole, Hamilton in five, and Zara Smith, Best in six. So two best swimmers in between them. We have Coco Croxford from Glasgow and Rebecca Cole from Hamilton. Good start from Coco in four. Fastest qualifier, 110. Really going for this, high tempo. So turning at 50, 32.8. So if you can keep this going, that will be definitely on track for beating her 110, maybe getting under that 110 for the first time. She's looking good at the moment. She's a good uh, swim boy. Go, go. Nice, smooth, st steady head. Good underwater. And she's still holding it on. Maybe lane six. Zara slightly edging back, but I think Coco's going to get this with 10 to go, coming in under the flags. Let's see if she can, I think it's how far under the, t the 110 she goes. And she does, 109, very nice. That's a nice little milestone for Coco to break. It's a good swim by Coco. It's really good, I've said it before, it's really um, exciting to see these young girls multi-eventing, swimming lots of events, having a go uh, at the young age they are, it's excellent. Yeah, absolutely. So just 13 years old Coco. That's good to see. Moving into this next heat, we have in lane one, Iona Wilson from East Lothian. In two, Athena Pierce, West Lothian. Grace Courtney, East Lothian. And Ashley Merson, West Lothian. We then have a heart of Mid Lothian, Holly Lumsden. Warren Baths in six, Katie Rose. Emma McGavin from Hamilton in seven. And Poppy McDonald, Weston Barton in lane eight. So 107 through to 109. So fairly close entry times. See where... These girls take this. Slight problem with the lane rope between lanes seven, uh, one and two. So we're just waiting for somebody to help fix that. How much do the lane ropes, these are specially designed lane ropes to absorb the waves. How, how, much, how much difference do you think they make? 
Oh, huge difference. Well, if you see, if we talked about NC2As, they actually put two lane ropes really? and to, together to create that kind of fast lane swimming and uh, it does make a massive difference uh, to to there to have all the all the equipment that the Royal Commonwealth pull here, the blocks, the ledges for the backstroke, um, obviously the anti-wave as well. It makes everything a little bit faster, a little bit more stronger and conducive to fast swimming. Yep, I'm sure this person would not be pleased to know that there everyone live streaming watching is watching her fix these lane ropes. Uh, no, no pressure, but uh, yeah, haven't worked here for a number of years now. The staff at the Royal Commonwealth Pool are first class, Edinburgh Leisure staff, and they're always really helpful and supportive. So, so there you go, almost as slick as a Grand Prix tire change there. there. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. So we're ready to go on this second heat. Iona Wilson, Athena Pierce, Grace Courtney, Ashley Merson, Holly Lumsden, Katie Rose, Emma McGavin, and Poppy McDonald. So that lane looks like it's fixed and we're ready to go. go get a shot of the swimmers now as they just jump in the water with the ledges it's a relatively new addition to backstroke made a big difference I think so I mean it's made it exciting it allows the swimmers to push off and get that arch over the top of the water a bit more grip so there's less slipping going on I remember in the uh, Commonwealth Games in Brisbane in 82 the Australians had spray on stuff that they were putting on their oh, feet right. that was it was so unusual that it wasn't deemed technically legal or legal and they were using it and whether it gave them any advantage who knows but I remember that from many years ago <laughs> nice start here from Katie Rose in lane six uh, just okay. taking it out with lane four Ashley Merson as well West Lothian swimmer so we're in the swimmer in six yeah, strong start there let's see how the underwaters go Really important. 3246, so that's not dissimilar to the first heat 50, so entry time is around 68. We're wanting to get under that, I'm sure, and she's pushing through on this third 25 as well. And she's kept that lead over Ashley in lane four. And Katie's doing a great job yeah. here. Swimming well, see if she can hold off Ashley. She, and also in lane seven, Emma McGavin coming in from Hamilton on her inside as well. But Katie's holding on here. See what she's going to do. And it's a nice swim from Katie, 107.11. So that's a nice improvement on her entry. Second, Emma McGavin, 108.04. And in third, it was Ashley Merson, 108.55. Yeah, Katie took that on from the start. It was a good swim. Our youth finals here. It's got a lot of youth swimmers further up the field as well, so we just need to see where that swim puts her. Oh, the screen's gone blank though, so always a little bit nervy. And the underwater phases with the girls there. Seeing each of the girls go past for at least five metres off the wall, which is good to see. So I'm just waiting to get confirmation of that last heat. So 107.11 Katie, Emmy McGavin 108.04, third Ashley Merson 108.55, so that was a time clarification rather than DQ, so we're going to move on to heat three, and in this heat we have Maria Howe, Aberdeen Performance in one, Lucy Stowe's Dundee City Aquatics in two, Isla Yule, South Aberdeen in three, Ella Stevenson, Bell Hill Sharks in four, Sienna Perry, Aberdeen Performance in five, Fern Crichton, Perth City in six. Kerry Gillespie, Aberdeen Performance in seven. And Ailey Armstrong, East Lothian in lane eight. So, 
see where the girls get to here. No swimmer in lane six. Look at that. So, good start there, lane three, Isla Yule. Also out here in lane eight, Ailey Armstrong, East Lothian. And in lane one, Maria Howe from Aberdeen Performance. Nice underwaters again. There's four swimmers in the far field there. They're all taking this one on. Keep, that'll help them, I think, spur them on. Yeah, I see how they hit these turn. It's tight in there. How much do swimmers see in backstroke in particular when their head's straight up, the swimmers around them? Yeah, you see whitewash normally, but um, and it's interesting, the, the roof can make a, a big difference if it's at a different route, can send the swimmers into the lane ropes. And I remember in the Gold Coast and uh, the Commonwealth Games in 2018, obviously there was no roof, so the swimmers were hitting the lane ropes a couple of times. It takes a bit of getting used to. Absolutely. It's a nice strong swim here, lane four from Lucy. Oh, good swim. So 104.95 seconds was Lucy Stowe's 105.79 third, Isla Yule 106.67 and fourth Ailey Armstrong 106.82. Yeah, back in the day I remember there was a pool in Leeds yes. that had hexagonal roof Then it was almost impossible to uh, determine which direction you were travelling. That's it, I'll remember that, I remember that well. And there's a pool that we swam in Luxembourg, exactly the same. Oh, really? The roof going the other way, and uh, yeah, it causes a few problems for the backstrokers. So we're moving into the circle seeding heats here. So we have uh, Kiana Kurtz and Morinder in one, Jacqueline McMillan, Incas in two, Scarlett Ferris, Dundee City Aquatics in three, Emily Grant, Aberdeen Performance in four, Anna Green, Warren Bass in five. Olivia Butler, Edinburgh Union 6, Marie Wood, Aberdeen Performance in 7, and Martha Reeves, Dundee City Aquatic in lane 8. So a slight delay again. There's been a few technical problems all the way through this. I think the system's not been used much in the last year and a half, so I think it's been a little bit rusty. Yeah. Um, not surprising, really. I think that was a swimmer's hat just split and she has good practice that she had a spare in the bag. She went straight up and changed it. Good on her. Which is good to see. That's good practice. So full complement other than lane two. Jacqueline McMillan is out of this heat. We go in this first to cycle seated heats and again look out central lane. You'd expect Emily Grant, Anna Green to be strong, and it is Emily and Anna, and on their inside, Scarlett Ferris from Dundee City Aquatic. It's very yeah. strong uh, underwater. Yeah. I was going to see how important that underwater is, makes such a different shore course. 29.44 from Emily. Nice strong start there. Also, Kiana cuts to the youngster lane one, only 13 into these circle seeded heats. Very good. But it's still Emily Grant, Anna Green now pushing her strong, as is Scarlett, with in fourth Kiana, and here Olivia Butler in six. And Anna's coming back at. Emily, as we get into this last five, I think Emily's just going to hold on, but 101.26, so nice swim there. Very strong as well, Anna Green, 101.73. Third, Scarlett Ferris, 102.73, and a very strong swim from Kiana, 103.88, not bad for 13. No, I was going to say, she's having a great lead. She is. Outside there, only 13 years old, what a swim, 103. Duncan, Duncan, do you want to check the 13 year old girl's 100 backstroke? Kiana was just off it. So there's it confirmed. Emily Grant, Anna Green, Scarlett Harris, Ferris, sorry. Strong swim there from Kiana. That points just over half a second off the age group record, but pretty strong swimming. And I would expect her to be in one of the AB or youth finals this evening. So see how all those girls 
here in the finals. So into this fifth heat, Melissa Mainwaring, West Lothian in one, Lucy Lucas, Edinburgh Uni in two, Holly McGill, Adam of Lothian in three, Jennifer King, University of Stirling in four, Ellie Turner, University of Stirling in five, Amy Shields, lane six, and seven, Rowan Saunders from Hart of Midlothian in lane eight. We have Kira Stricker, South Asia. So more excellent backstrokers here. Ellie Turner, Amy Shields, Jennifer King, Holly McGill, all at the top of their game. Yeah, Holly McGill's another one of those really talented young backstrokers that we talked about. Yeah, Jennifer King, University of Stirling, 23 year old. And Ellie Turner, and then Amy Shields, City of Glasgow. But it is Jennifer King. She's taking this one out on the first 50. Yeah, Jennifer. 29, 70. Yeah, Jennifer King spends some time out in the US. Skills are good. Very steady head. High head as well. She's out the water quite a bit. Yeah, get that tempo up. And she's taken this from the beginning and leading it all the way through. It's now Holly McGill on her inside just coming through. Strong 200 backstroker, so feels like she's got a very strong finish here. Also in lane eight, Kira Stricker. Yeah. But it's going to be Jennifer King, 101-2. Yeah, we've got a screen going blank, scoreboard blank in, in the pool. So we'll just have to wait to see what the implications of that was. But it looked like it was Jennifer King then... Holly McGill, 102.03, and in lane th uh, third, Ellie Turner, 102.94. Uh, disqualification, unfortunately, in lane one, Melissa Mainwaring. Yeah. Unfortunate, but a good strong... So this is building up to be a pretty good final already. Yeah, I mean, uh, Holly McGill's been to Phil Potter, her coach, earlier. She negative split that 200 backstroke. Wow. Uh, so she went 209.0, so she's... Working towards a strong back end and looking very strong in that as well. They need to come back strongly there. And we move into this last heat with more good backstrokers. Elaine Murray, Aberdeen Performance in one. Ava Simpson, Edinburgh Uni in two. Ella Shields, Edinburgh Uni in three. Joanna Saka, Edinburgh Uni in four. Warren DeBass, Rachel Saunders in five. Splitting up another Edinburgh Uni swimmer in six. Katie Kate Butler. Seven, Rebecca Reed from Aberdeen. And an eight, Heidi Wren, City of Glasgow. Yeah, Joanna's in a great form. Uh, joined us this year on a postgraduate scholarship um, and as I said broke the, the on the 200 back so the Greek national record yesterday which was fantastic what are we looking for for the record in the 100 here I don't know <laughs> I need to find out um, 200 is more of a thing so she'll be looking to get some good uh, good speed on this backstroke very good well she's got people around her who can push her on that's for sure that Rachel is. Saunders represented Britain at the uh, European Junior Championships last year So let's see how this race unfolds as they go. Final heat of this 100 back. All getting good starts. And you, know, you saw there Joanna right on the 15, yeah, making every yeah. every inch of that. That's quite a skill. I mean, it doesn't, you just can't do that by accident, can you? No, you have to practice. spend time in the US again, honing her skills. I'll tell you something, Rachel Saunders is going well here as well. Look at that. Very fast first 50 for Rachel. She's seen the swimmers before her and wants to show them that she means business as well. And she's got nice coming out as well. And Rachel is just ahead of Joanna. Joanna coming back on the, on the swim there, though, in that third 25. But it's very close. Rachel just a very quick flip over there. Joanna maybe just coming out ahead, but it's going to be a cracking last 50, 25 here. Joanna maybe just edging ahead of Rachel, but... Um, very strong swim from both girls as they've really pushed each other on in this heat. And it's a 101.43. Yeah, and a 101.75 for Rachel. So I do think that it, that race in particular is going to be one to watch this evening. You've got all eight swimmers are going to be in the 101.102. So look forward to that one later on this evening. Yeah. Let's see where the lines lineups are at the moment. We'll get them on the screen. So that's confirmation of that heat so that eight there is likely to be your a final next list is likely to be your b final and then youth final will be dependent on age group of the youngsters and how people swim this evening so we'll wait to see that but 
I definitely recommend you come back in the evening for that women's 100 backstroke. That's going to be yeah. a cracker. It's really stacking up there. So we're moving on to the penultimate event, which is the men's 100 metres IM. And we have five heats here. In this first heat, Conrad Slesser in lane one, Aberdeen Performance, Dean Fern, South Aberdeen, lane two, Kieran Lennox, Aberdeen Performance, three, Sally Talib, University still four, Michael Flynn, City of Glasgow in five, Owen Carroll, Perth City in six, Finn Bremner, Warrender in seven, Greer, Van der Mullen, Sterling Swim in eight. So, not often swum the 100 IM, but I think it's most swimmers think it's a bit of a fun event, so yeah. nice thing to do. It is, it's, uh, I was just about to say, it's a fun event. The guys can get into it and have a good, good race. And it's the youngster, 2698 Dean Fern. I have a feeling that there may be another 13-year-old age group record under threat here. This boy loves to race. I love it. Pulled out the 200 fly earlier on, I suspect. So the 101.32 for Dean Fern. Not bad at 13 getting a reputation when people are guessing the records that you might be breaking <laughs> next. Yeah. Not bad at all, but it's actually lane four. That's Swally Tally from University of Stirling, 59.64. Second, Michael Flynn, 105.51. And then third, Finn Bremner, 101.00. Dean Fern just missing out the record, but let's not... That is still a fantastic swim for a 13-year-old, 101.73. So uh, really nice swimming there. Getting under the minute, though, Swally. So he'll be pleased with that. Nicely under his entry. Yeah, that's a strong swim there. Uh, Matthew Brown in the next heat in lane one for Aberdeen Performance. Kieran Breschner, Aberdeen Dolphin in two. Lucas Brown, Elgin in three. Robert Burgess, City of Glasgow in four. Brendan Johnson, Aberdeen Performance in five. Finlay Wallace, Aberdeen Performance in six. We have Stefan Kravich, East Lothian in seven. And Nathan Campbell, Sterling Swimming in lane eight. Um, youngsters in here again, Lucas and Stefan. See how they go. See on the uh, 100 iron, those transition turns, fly to back, back to breast especially, uh, really important. So yeah, they go from one stroke to the next. No margin for error in the 100 iron, really. Oh, no, not at all. So strong first 25 from both Brendan Johnson and Stefan Kravich, and also in lane three, Lucas Brown. Two 15 year olds with Brendan Johnson. 23 year old in the middle and it's Stefan 26.45 so that's faster than the previous heat so you'll be expecting him to be getting under the minute or thereabouts it's really tightened up on the far side of the pool yeah, and strong swim here from Brendan Johnson Stefan really having a go here he loves the short events wow he's taken quite a few metres off people in that breaststroke leg and is storming away and we're just 57.81, and that is a national age group record for Stefan. 57.81, great swim there from him. Missed it just at the end on the live stream, unfortunately. Brendan Johnson, 100.38 in second, and Finley Wallace from Aberdeen Performance as well, 101.00. So that's another record crack. cracked on by Stefan Kravich there. Quite a talent. Oh, very much so. I was taking the mickey out of him. He was 2.11 on the 200 fly earlier, so probably pacing himself a little bit, save a little bit of energy for that. But uh, no, it was an excellent race, and Stefan's uh, got a lot of ability. Yeah. yeah. So in fact he'll get another shot at his 200 fly this evening as yeah. well. Yeah. So just choosing his races to go hard, and that's a nice place to be. <laughs> so Ross Errant's here in lane three, lane one for South Ayrshire. Rory McKinnon, City of Glasgow in two. Chris Muir, University of Stirling in three. Rory Dixon, University of Stirling in four. In five, James, Jamie Ferguson from Aberdeen Performance. Pierce Greening, Uni of Stirling in six. Tom Robinson, Aberdeen Performance in seven. Jake Kirkham from first is not swimming. So 57.81 is the new benchmark for these guys to be at. Lane three, we've got Chris Muir. 
who's going out fast. See who gets it. Oh, a nice shot of the uh, turn there and shows it's very close. And it was Ruri in lane two. Strong backstroke there. 26.57. So he's there or thereabouts with uh, Stefan Swim. But it's a very strong breaststroke leg there from Rory Dixon, which you'd expect. Breaststroke specialist from University of Stirling. And he's all of a sudden come out in the lead. And he's going to take this one. Lane seven, six is Pierce screening as well. 56.53. So nicely under his entry time and the fastest swimmer thus far. In fact, then Pierce screening 57.58 second and Chris Muir 58.05 in third. So still faster than their entries there. So that's nice to see. And Ruri, who is leading at halfway, found himself back in six and a 58-98, but still a nice improvement on his entry time. Uh, strong swim, and on that breaststroke, really took it on and set the tone for that race. Fantastic swimming. So Lewis Bailey, Aberdeen Performance in one. Dominic McCarthy, University of Stirling in two. Connor Massey, Aberdeen Performance in three. Robert Bryce, Aberdeen Dolphins in four. Mark Ford, City of Glasgow in five. Oscar Smiley. University of Stirling in six, Marius Kringelis, Edinburgh Union seven, and Murray Pritchard, Perth City in lane eight. So, approaching the end of the morning session, been some good swimming. Oh, some excellent swimming, it's really encouraging seeing some of these uh, young swimmers. Uh, not only the, the fact that they're swimming fast and swimming well, considering everything that you know we've been through over the last 18 months but but also the amount of events that they keep coming back to swim that's, that's, that's the encouraging thing from a Scottish swimming point of view hard to replicate lots of swims but the more you do it that's right the less hard it gets I guess not sure it gets easy <laughs> no. so we're off and in this fourth heat of the 100 IM. And we have Mark Ford, lane five, taken out strong. You'd expect him to have a strong first 50 at least. Excellent on fly and backstroke. Excellent backstroke turn, taking it all to the 15. On his inside, Robert Bryce. But it's a very good first 25.03. Goodness, that's... Uh, a second and a half quicker than anything we've seen before. See how he holds on on the breaststroke. Pulling back a little bit now. Two Aberdeen swimmers, Dolphin and Performance, both caught Mark up. See whether Mark pushes it back on this freestyle legs. And he's given it a good go with Robert Bryce, 27-year-old, on his inside. And I think Robert's going to just edge him out. And he does. 56-58. Good swim there by Robert. Second half. And he definitely had the mark won the first 50. Robert yeah. definitely won the second. Connor Massey in third, 57 6 0. So he's just under his entry time as well, so that's nice. And um, we're now moving into the final heat of these 100 IMs. We've got women's 400 metres next. That's the last event of this morning's session. Let's focus on the 100 IM though. We have Nick van der Wood, Edinburgh University in one. Ben Carr, Edinburgh Uni in two. Keir Edgar, Glasgow University in three. Tony Joe Tret Oliver, University of Stirling in four. Yushin Cook, Edinburgh Uni in five. Jamie Allison, Aberdeen Performance in six. Andrew Arthur, University of Stirling in seven. And Matthew Garrity in the Clyde in lane eight. Is it van der Wood or Wood? Wood, I think. So, final 100 IM. Tony Joe, fastest qualifier, 55. Not seen a 55 yet, so see whether he can do that in this heat. Pretty close still, though, in that first 25 fly. Maybe lane two, Ben Carr, Edinburgh Uni, and lane four, Tony. And then Ishin in lane five. Expect him to come back strongly on this breaststroke leg. 
Quite a long way to come back though. Yeah, I didn't really enjoy that breast, uh, backstroke from Mushy. <laughs> he's miles away. Uh, he's just doing it to make it look exciting because he's definitely coming back on this 25. And uh, that's a great breaststroke comeback from Yushin, but uh, Tony is off and away. And it's the Sterling swimmer. And he comes in first, Yushin second, and Ben maybe third, but we'll have to wait and see. And we will also have to wait because the screen has gone blank again. So let's hope it's just timing adjustments. Let's see though, unfortunately not. Oh, and it's lane four. A bit of drama there. That's the fastest swimmer. Unfortunately disqualified for technical infraction. So that means you've seen Cook takes that heat in 57-58. Yeah, and that's your lineup for the A and B final likelihoods with a youth final to come. I think there's a youth final in this. Need to just double check. So, well, that's not often the fastest swimmer gets DQ'd. There was no. something in ISL recently, wasn't there? One of the um, one of the Australian swimmers got DQ'd mm, and caused yeah. great controversy. Oh. I, certainly in our household, caused controversy. <laughs> but, uh, on technical uh, aspects. Two touches on the breaststroke turn, apparently. Oh, right, OK. Which you wouldn't be expecting from no. uh, world champions and Olympic champions. So No, no not at all. It's, uh, when you're swimming so fast, especially short course, you know, and you're trying to react and move fast around the walls or, you know, off the start, sometimes these things can happen. Um, you know, you have to watch out and be so clinical and so fat, everything moves so fast, so sometimes these things happen. Yeah. You wouldn't want to be the technical official disqualifying Michael Phelps or something, though, would no, you? No, no, no. <laughs> so, moving into the 400 free, we have five heats here. Uh, first heat, we have Susie McNair first in lane two, Amy Bell with low lean in three. Amelia Mardell, Alverston in four. Freya Beaton, City of Glasgow in five. Tegan Black, East Lothian in six. And Emma McGavin, Hamilton in seven. So what's, uh, what's your advice as a coach to somebody on 400 free? Well, you get many, many aspects here. I think you're looking at race taxis, looking to make sure that you're effective and efficient, especially short course around the turns, but that first half of the race, just getting the breathing set up, a breathing pattern, and then looking to build into it so the second half can be strong and you can uh, finish strong in the race. Um, it's really important to get that pacing set up at, in the first few, few, uh, few f f f 50s. And the girls looking to achieve that in this heat. Setting off are in lane three. Amy Bell, sorry, lane four, Amelia Mardell, and in lane six, Tegan Black, so 105.99, so that's a 35 second 50, so would you expect that 35 to be kind of where they're trying to hit it for the remainder with a little yeah. pick up at the end maybe? That's right, trying to be consistent around the turns, uh, consistent in the stroke, yeah, and that got in a gradual building phase, bringing the legs in gradually. Say so you can see it uh, here, there that you're just keeping a soft kick involved, but gradually building it in as you get throughout the race. So it's a, not really a distance event, but it's not really a sprint event either, is it? It's, uh, no. Well, that's what if you watch some of the the best in the world, they are they pretty much go out strong, but relaxed and build into that last sort of 50 50 meters, last 75 meters. You'll see them really go for it. That's uh, nice here. That was a 34.8 for uh, Amelia on that third 50. So she's already got into that groove around the 35, 34, 5, 50s. And she's pulled away quite quite a lot already, 216.06. Yeah. yeah, it looks relaxed. I like how Amelia's swimming this, keeping the legs engaged, not out completely, just keeping a portion in there relaxed. Breathing every three, it's yeah. quite unusual these yeah. days isn't it yeah what you tend to find she might be a, a three and then bring it in just before the turn every two 
Oh, and she goes and breathes too, just, yeah. just to prove us wrong. Yeah. Curse of the commentator, strikes again. Yeah. But she's swimming really well, really efficient here. And you'll see that she'll be building through this. So 34.9, so she really is 34.8, 35.3, 34.9, 34, so yeah. 105. First 100, a 106 really, and then a 110 for the second. So this looks nice, so her entry time, 4.39, Elverston swimmer. Should be looking to, to beat that. I think so with this pacing. Mm -hmm. 3.26.42. That's another 35. 50, so a, one, a 110 again, so yeah, she's definitely at 35, 35 groove. Yeah, she's increased the rate a little bit now, so we're trying to bring it home, kick still involved. So with 50 to go, I think. You can see the kick just coming in a wee bit. Yeah. So... Turning 401.68. There you go. Yeah. Done everything right in this one, but yeah. looks things, didn't she? No, I just took a ch check on a on a rate there and uh, swimming around about 38, 36 rate all the way through. Very consistent. So, rate. What, what are we yeah. what are we talking about there? Strokes per minute. So, um, stroke rate and. Uh, yeah, she's been really solid and consistent. That gradual build all the way through. This is a really good swim. Ah, 4.36. So a nice improvement on her entry time. That looked very nice. And so in terms of stroke rate, is that that changes per distance swum? Is it Can do, yeah. Obviously for the 50, you've got a high one. You could be yeah, so you can have a, the, uh, the stroke rate can fluctuate from the events, but also depends on what type of swimmer you are as well. But... Amelia saw it really well there, consistently all the way through. Very good. Just to um, let those on the live stream know that uh, in that 200 IM, in that final heat, Tony Joe Chetolver had originally been disqualified, but he has been reinstated. So the fastest swimmer is back in the final. So that was going to build into another great final this evening. One of the last finals on show, and that looks like it's going to be really close. Quite a few swimmers in the 56-57 margin so that's good to see nice to see the swimmers getting a swim that's what they're here to do so i'm sure he'll be delighted to be reinstated there yeah he was very strong on that and uh he'll be glad to be in the mix tonight yeah good to see We're moving into um the second heat of five in lane one we have phoebe arbuckle from warren de baths and two leah hughes from city of glasgow georgina hawkins millfield in three kerry gillespie Aberdeen performance in four Anna Williamson, City of Glasgow in five. Jenna Cole, Bell Hill Sharks in six. Stella McCarty, City of Glasgow in seven. Holly Simpson of Aberdeen Performance in eight. So, 13-year-old Phoebe in here, lane one. Number of 15 and 16-year-olds and a 17-year-old in lane eight. So, we've got the pacing from the first heat just to keep us straight. Always interesting to compare, so 30.32. Talking at rate, so in lane four there, that seems like a really quick rate going on yeah. for the uh, for Kerry Gillespie from Aberdeen. Yeah, there's obviously some distance swimmers will um, will pick up the rate or keep a solid rate all the way through. Uh, you know, and I know Patrick Miley up at Aberdeen is a big fan of that. He works to stroke rate a lot of the time. So it's no surprise that you see an Aberdeen swimmer with, with a high tempo and try and sustain it all the way through. And is that something in training? People, you know, there will be targeted rates per length rather than times or whatever. Is that, is that, will that be part of some training regime? or For sure. I mean, there's tempo trainers that you can use and put in your swim hat that can target a certain rate if you're practicing a pace set. And I just clocked there. Um, uh, the stroke rate was 49. So, so, so it's 10 more than yeah. uh, the previous heat. Yeah. So wow. So she's working, but she'll be looking to, rather than building it, she'll be looking to sustain that all the way through. 
and she'll be working hard with the coaches to practice that in training. So that's amazing, 10. <laughs> yeah, I just clocked 50, so he's gone up. Wow. <laughs> you know? Wind up and let go. Yeah, so you see the different techniques and tactics in here. This is a high tempo swimmer. Fascinating stuff. So um, she is, it's working now. Yeah. She's uh, going to turn first. 2.13.96, so that's a good couple of seconds up on uh, Amelia in the first first set, uh, first heat, and Phoebe Arbuckle in lane one, youngster, 13, she's sticking with him, so that's pretty good going, and actually maybe edging in to compete for the lead as we get into the second half of this 400. So there you see the difference in rates. One's 50, one's 40. Um, well, outside of Lane, yeah. Phoebe. Yeah, she's uh, really picking it up. Also, besides Kerry, is Anna Williamson from City of Glasgow. She's also, so it's a three way, three way race now. As they, and I think Phoebe may be just edging. That's a nice shot, watching the turn. You can see whether the arms are coming into the centre of the stroke there. Do you want to talk us through that? Oh, that's a shame. We were yeah. going to have a nice <laughs> talk through a different angle there. We'll yeah. need to get that back on next time. Yeah, really good placement. That's high tempo uh, swimming. Well, Phoebe's really had a go here. but So it's, it's not Phoebe, but it's also not Kerry. It's Anna no. Williamson who's yeah. just edged that one, but very close. Good race, taking it on. So Anna's really picked up as well, and Phoebe, so this will be a good coming in with finishing this last 50. I think Anna's really paced this well. Very well. And Kerry's not out of it, but it's going to be hard to come back from here, and Anna's really got on 3.59.43, so that's a couple of seconds up on the previous heat, so she'll be looking for yeah, 4.34, which would be nicely under her entry time. And as we come up to the last 25, it's a strong swim from Anna. Phoebe as well. 4.38 was Phoebe's entry, so she'll be looking to get under that and should do with this swimming. But it's going to be Anna in nice there. 4.33.27. Nice swim from Phoebe, second. Four seconds uplift on uh, her entry time, and in third, early early leader with the high stroke rate, Kerry Gillespie, 4.37.18. That was a really well paced swim from Anna, all the way through, gradually picking it up. Long stroke, brought in the legs gradually as the, as the race went on. Well, good swim. Yeah, so I think she was out in about a 2.15.16, so would have not quite negative split, but very, very even. Uh, even there, which is not easy to do. And we're moving into heat three. So we have Jessica Heaps from Foldhouse in lane one, Louise Stoddart, East Lothian in two, Jennifer Murray, Edinburgh University in three, Natalie Jones, Warren the Baths in four, Millie Milne, also Warren the Baths in five, Cara Gordon, Sterling Swim in six, Alwyn Cook, Edinburgh Uni in seven, and Isabel Wood from Sterling Swimming in lane eight. So moving into the territory for folk who might be looking forward to doing another 400 freestyle later in the day in the A or B final. Not sure we've got a swimmer in. I oh know, we had a full field. Let's see what we see here now. Two Warrender girls right in the middle, distinctive red hats. And Louise Stoddard in East Lothian, so it's pretty, still pretty level, maybe with the exception of lane six, Cara. Lane Alwyn Cook here, Edinburgh Uni. Yeah, she's uh, followed her brother over from Ireland. Ah. Um, and this is in her first year. So, what's her 
Well, she does a bit of breaststroke and uh, she's actually just started working with uh, Ross Douglas, our coach, and we're having a look at the freestyle distance at the moment. She oh, seems, to, seems be to be doing pretty well so yeah. far. That's uh, yeah. if the first 100 of this 400 is anything to go by. So let's yeah. see if she can uh, keep this going. My goodness, already yeah. nearly five metres on uh, Natalie in lane four. Let's see if she can keep this up. So 101. 78. That's certainly not the first hundred of a swimmer who's going to do a 4:34. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So there's two races here. There's Owen against the clock, and there's the rest of the girls who are not that far away from each other. Two or three, five meters back. Natalie Jones leading them. Warren the swimmer, lane four. But it's uh, Owen definitely taking this one out. Very composed at the moment. If she can keep this keep this tempo going. So sitting around about 38 rate for Olwyn. So that's back to the similar to the first yeah, team. Yeah, that's right. So she's really still powering on. There's three girls now, really in lanes three, four, and six. So Jennifer Murray. Natalie Jones and Cara, who are all still in the mix at second, maybe lane three. Another Edinburgh Uni swimmer, Jennifer Murray, 210.52. So it's a 34 for, uh, for Owen, so just slowing slightly by a second of 50. And they do seem to be holding against her, maybe just coming back slightly the rest of the field so this is where she's got to really dig in I guess yeah no absolutely she's fairly inexperienced with the event so maybe pushed it a bit too hard in the first part but she's she's holding on okay at the moment so 35-5 again so yeah slowly being reeled in by her teammate Jennifer Murray and on her inside Cara Gordon interestingly Cara in the first hundred was a good two or three seconds behind everybody. So she's yeah. very slowly just, just worked her way back through the field. Yeah, really good swimmer, Cara here building through it. Sterling swimmer. Nice shot there of Olwyn from the opposite side of the pool. 3.21. So another 40, 35. Yeah. So she's now at that pace. So yeah. she's sticking at it. It just looks like the others are maybe just reeling her, in. reeling her back in slightly fast. It's a really nice swim here from Cara because she, she has slowly but surely made her way back through the field. And is dropping Jennifer Murray and Natalie in lane eight. Isabel Wood is coming back into it as well. But it's still Owen. Yeah, just about here. Yeah, should be an interesting last 50. 3.56, yeah. see if she can hold on. Still three seconds up on the previous heat, so I'd like to be thinking she's going to be getting for under the 4.30, so that would be a nice improvement on her entry time, and she's holding her own. Yeah, just about, but here comes Carr, really tight with her now. It's going to be a good last 25. So, so a real over. strong kick there from Cara yeah. off the wall. Yeah. And she's really coming back. Tidy stroke from Cara, but I think Alwyn's going to hold it off, I think. She's really saved a little bit for the end there, and she is going to hold it off. In a 4.30.62. Should you be pleased with that? Yeah, I think so. Ross has done a good job. We've only really just started looking at the, the distance events for Alwyn. So he showed with her experience at the start of the race. And, uh, you know, she might look to, if she gets a second shot of that, try and reel it in a little bit. Excellent. So, again, the screen's on uh, blank on the pool. Hopefully, not hard to get disqualified in the 400 free. So hopefully it's a time adjustment. So. And it is time adjustment, it's good to see. 4.30.62 for Alwyn, Cara Gordon, 4.31.45, and Jennifer Murray in third, 4.33.79. So, nice swimming there, and we're now moving into the penultimate heat of the morning session. And in this one we have Olivia Mason from Warren Bath in one, Amy Shields from City of Glasgow in two, Abbey Hall, Edinburgh University in three, 
Nicole Ricky, Edinburgh University in four. Kaylin Hall, Aberdeen Performance in five. Katie Taylor, City of Glasgow in six. Meg Finnan, University of Stirling in seven. And Mary Craig, Stirling Swimming in eight. So a couple of your swimmers in here. Yeah, Nicole is an uh, Italian uh, junior international. Um, still very young, still only 17. Um, but uh, came again another swimmer from swam in Plymouth for the last few years. Um, and made a move to study and swim in Edinburgh. Very good. So yeah, 17 young to be at, young yeah, to be at uni. That's right. She's very assured. Um, young lady. Katie Taylor is absolutely taking this one out. Yeah. Better known as a, she's really moved into open water swimming, I think, in, the, in recent years, Katie. And uh, distance as well, but she's going out on this one like a sprinter. Yeah, she certainly have the background with that, with that type of swimming, but uh, she's really having a go here. So it is Katie taking it out. You've got Olivia Mason in one, and you've got lane four, Nicole. And Katie just being reeled back in. Goodness, all of a sudden there's five of them. I oh, I wonder whether yeah, Katie yeah. was going for 100 time there. Let's see what she did. 59.94, so yeah. I wonder whether she was going for under the minute, and she did, so that's good to see, but she's yeah. going to have a bit of a painful yeah. next two or three minutes, I would have yeah. thought, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that. She has to finish the race, I think, to get that time oh, accredited. That right? okay. and so, so anyway, she has left the others. I wonder if that spooked some of the other swimmers, or they've all managed to keep their race plan in, in place. So it is normal service has been resumed so you've got Nicole Ricky turning in 133.73 then you've got Kaylin Hall on her outside and good start from uh, Olivia Mason in lane one had a good 50 earlier on so see how this race unfolds now that we've worked out what Katie was doing so Nicole edging ahead She's got a 4.11 entry, so quite significantly faster than the others in this field if she chooses to go to that pace, but unless she's going to negative split it, which is always a possibility. I think she just wanted to keep control in there. She's moved it on a bit, brought the kick in. So well, I think she'll still keep an element of control here. Um, she had other swims today, or is this her main? No, I think we saw her um, earlier on in the... Did we? Fly. I think she had a good go at that. So 239.14. Second is now Meg Finnan. That's, uh, she's come through strongly in this uh, third 100. And she's starting to push on to, um, to Nicole, University swim Sterling swimmer, Meg. Gradually reeling her in. And now it's a race for second between Kaylin and Olivia. This heat's quite a bit faster than the previous heat in totality. And 3.12.69. So already nine seconds ahead of the previous. So Nicole's sort of swimming to the pace of the others at the moment. So it's like 10 seconds over her entry, but looks very controlled, looks very comfortable. Yeah, I see Meg just reeling her in just a little bit. Meg showing her experience. Another swimmer spent time in the US. Um, Both these athletes look pretty controlled here, though. Just gradually building through. Yeah, it's now Meg, but only just a couple of tenths. Definitely feels like it's picked up almost every 50. Good race for, sec for third between uh, Kaylin and 17-year-old Kaylin and 17-year-old Olivia in lanes five and one so into the final 25 and it looks like ooh, are they having a race out here and it's very very tight ooh. and it is Nicole 41980 and she did negative no she's not quite negative split not quite, so no. pretty good 41980 second is uh, Meg Finn in 41997 Kaylin Hall 42292 so that's a nice swim for her and Olivia, 423.83, so it's an improvement on our entry time as well. So some expect to be seeing at least the first few in that heat 
coming back for the uh, this evening's swim. And we move on to the final final race of the morning. So final 400 freestyle for women. In lane one, we have Iona Morley from Winchester, Catherine Bailey, Perth City in two, Rebecca Reed, Aberdeen in three, Michaela Glenster, University of Stirling in four, Madeline Robertson from Kronos in five, Laura Hodgson, Newcastle in six, Natasha Simpson from Warrenda in seven, and Ella Thatcher Plant, Edinburgh Uni in lane eight. And I'm assuming this isn't another mo Robertson in lane five that's a distant cousin, is it? Or, uh, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so, moving into this final. Do you think being in the last heat, is that an advantage for some of these swimmers, or do you think they're just going to swim it and know they're just going to do their own race? What, what, what do you reckon? I think so. I think when you see the, uh, obviously the races before, you know where to pitch it, you might be able to sort of um, adjust your race plan accordingly but um, for the experienced athletes in there they'll, they'll have a job and they'll have set it up with the coaches beforehand uh, a race strategy they might be trying new things maybe looking at the negative splits going out stronger and trying to hold on or descending hundreds one to four um, so they'll be looking at like a, a race tactic to execute and practice because uh, every opportunity is a chance to practice that and uh all executing that plan as they go into the turn for the first 50. And that's Kayla Glenstart, 29.06. Pretty close there across the field, although she's really... Looks like her plan was to go out strong. So uh, she has got an entry time that is a good 10 seconds faster than the rest of the field. So perhaps not surprising. Um, and the rest are sticking with each other, maybe on our outside, Madeline Robertson from Kronos. Where's Kronos? Do you know? No idea. <laughs> oh, need to do some homework on that one. So, 1004. Yeah. That's if we were really on it, we'd have had a Twitter feed going or something, and people could have been asking us, telling us the answer to something like that, yeah, but we don't, sure. so we'll have to find out in the, in the break. Yeah. Yeah, Michaela. Uh, Duncan. So you don't need the, the internet when you've got Duncan McKinnell sitting next to you. So Kronos is in Spain and uh, she's a Scottish swimmer swimming out of Spain. So our own little fact, fact file Duncan has provided us the info on that one. That's interesting. So yeah, Spanish-based Scott. So I wonder if you might be coming over to these shores for when she gets into further education. Maybe a recruit for you there. Uh. <laughs> Maybe take a trip down there. Oh, oh, oh why don't you, eh? Yeah, well, 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 what a shame. <laughs> Get down to Spain for a trip. Yep. Any excuse? Yeah. But she's uh, doing well. She's in with a bunch of swimmers who are in lanes five, six, and seven. So that is Madeline, Laura, and Natasha. Um, Michaela strongly still ahead. Two or five just there on the uh, first 200. So, uh, you know, she's going to be in in low two ten, uh, four tens, I would think. The rest of the swimmers, about four or five seconds behind her. Very close, actually joint second between Madeline and Laura. 2.41.28 on that turn. So really nothing... Nothing between them. Yeah, Mikhail is well in control here. Lovely stroke, rangy stroke. Just keep that soft leg kick in, in place. Uh, another uh, world junior level swimmer and moved to Sterling over a year ago. And uh, she's doing a really good job here. She does look very strong. 3.11. So she has eased back a little. And the other girls, maybe just uh, Madeline and Laura, just pulling away slightly from Natasha. Laura from Newcastle, or based in Newcastle, I should say. Scott's based another Anglo. Quite a few of them at the meet this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Making a choice to come and compete here rather than the uh, ASA yeah. Championships last week. 
Good to see them here. Gets the competition going. And it's still Michaela in lane four. And maybe now lane... It is lane six, Laura, from the Newcastle swimmer, who's just edging away in that little group. Oh, that was a really good turn there from, uh, from Madeline in lane five. Just edged back. So, coming in here, very comfortable-looking swim for Michaela, really. 4.17.58. Nice, Madeline, 4.19.51, just behind Laura Hodgson in 4.18.79. So expect those swimmers, those three at least, to be in the final. So we'll just have to work out the, the remainder of the, the lineup for those final swims. So mm, there's like four, five girls there, I think, under 4.20 should be a... Uh, should a be a nice race. Yeah, should be a good final. And yeah. there's the final confirmation of the final race of the day there with Michaela, Laura and Madeline. We'll just get the last screen up of the all the results from that 400 free but as we do that just to say thank you very much to Chris for joining us all that insightful detail and knowledge there that you're bringing that's been really really useful and interesting for me anyway that's for sure and I'm sure it has been for the, the live stream audience as well no, thank you very much really enjoyed it watching it from uh, this side yeah and uh, good luck for the rest of your summers for the for the weekend no, and thank you very uh, much. we will sign off today don't forget to come back for the uh, live stream this afternoon and this evening and for the morning session, goodbye to you all on the live stream.